here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Incredible. Hello, everyone. Right. Hello. This is a very, uh, very civilized start. Normally, people are getting at each other straight away in some way or another. Oh, did you want mm. me to? Did you want me to come in really hot? Fuck you, Chad. Fuck no, you. No, no. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I'm here just to agree with Demon Mama. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Let me give, give me a high five, Snowdrift. Um. Okay. I'm just. I'm just waiting for Viv. I guess. I guess whilst we're waiting for Viv, we'll just get started. Can I? Can I just say, like, listen. I don't. I don't normally uh, suck myself off, but you know, I. I do feel like um, things are pretty organised, even though I'm a fairly disorganised person. Um, let's. Okay. Let's go around the room and uh, everyone can just introduce themselves. Give yourself like a, uh, you know, a little introduction, okay? Uh, and things like that. Uh, oh, Booksmarts, thanks so much for the raid. I really appreciate it. Um, good stuff. Oh, you're here. Okay. Okay, right, listen. Okay. Sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I'm a bit tired. I don't fucking know. Right, Ordinary Snowflake. Do you want to go ahead and just give yourself an introduction? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. You're Ooh. not anymore. Okay, we're going to have okay, to adjust cool. some audio levels. Um, yeah, so, hi, Ordinary Snowflake is my YouTube channel. You can also call me Allison. That's also totally fine. I'm a very tiny YouTube channel. I do, like, the standard bread tube stuff, you know, like, little media analysis, a little, like, talking about the manosphere, just, like, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, like, are we talking, like, capitalism bad type stuff, yeah? Capitalism, definitely bad. Um, the video okay. I just pointed out the other day uh, is be basically very kindly tearing apart Hamilton for being, like, basically liberal propaganda for the American empire. Um, it's really long, but, you know, I think it's good. You should watch it. <laughs> okay, cool. Oh, your um, uh, mic is pretty quiet, um, Snowflake, so just, uh, if you could turn yourself up a little bit, thanks. Yeah, sure, I can do that. Sick. Okay, cool. Um, right. Uh, next up, we've Thanks got no follow. comment chick. Thanks for the follow, Israeli gamer. Yeah, it'll Irene, be good. There. Irene? Uh-oh. <laughs> she just left. <laughs> okay, I guess not. Right. Wait, let's... Okay, well. okay, I'll just... Let me just drop her a DM and tell her to get into the thing. Um, right, Snowdrift, you, you go ahead. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Snowdrift. Um, I'm a musician... Uh, lefty politics. I do some political stuff, um, philosophy stuff on YouTube, Snowdrift Moon. You can follow me on Twitter, Snowdrift Moon. Um, I am recently back from um, what I am referring to as the grill period. Some of you may know Picasso's blue period in which he created many masterpieces. Um, I, I didn't create anything, but I, I, I was off of Twitter. And it was uh, it was a really great time for me. So, um, God bless. It's good to be back. Okay, cool. And uh, you look, know, we'd be remiss of me not to mention, uh, you know, this new genre that seems to be forming, Chud Wave. Do you want to just uh, tell us a little bit about that quickly? Chud Wave. Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the I'm the flag bearer. Uh, I'm the forerunner of Chud Wave, which is uh, just something good, that I actually I was when I was just on stream with Calls a little bit ago, and they were talking um, about like putting political stuff over like vaporwave-esque music so i was just like oh i could probably Chud, do that with Chud. Chudwave is great so um <laughs> i just took a bunch of clips yeah and, that's and the cum pledge. over a track that i had sitting around and um, C. it's not out like formally yet it's on soundcloud but snooze. i'll do like a proper like video don't give me the snooze there it. israeli Sometime, just get like, started this, week, this is the intro probably this weekend okay cool um right uh book smarts I'm book smart. I analyze panels like this, but I rarely ever partake in them, so it'll be fun. We talk about rhetoric and stuff on my stream, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I, I wanted to get you on because um, I can you know, explain. It I know a lot of the conversations Just you have are quite me. meta, and uh, I figured this might might get meta potentially. So um, hopefully, you can add some uh, some insights and perspectives and whatnot. Yeah, we could bring you big brain takes. Yeah. Um, okay. Right, Demon Mama. 
Yeah, hey, I'm Demon Mama. Um, I do uh, lefty politics, media stuff, some gaming, and a whole bunch of debates. I really like debating. Um, so, yeah, um, if you like any of that stuff, I think you'll have a lot of fun following my channel. I'm Demon Mama Live here on Twitch, your Demon Mama on Twitter. Um, yeah, come hang out. We have a great community, um, and we do all kinds of fun stuff. So, uh, thanks for having me, Chud. No worries. Okay, Nufi? I'm a master debater, true. Hey, I'm Nufi. I'm uh, the uh, co-host of the show, I guess. Um, I make political comics. You can just Google me, uh, Noopy Tunes. Uh, they're, they're decent, I guess. Noopy's um, based. That's about it. Noopy based. Okay, cool. Um, good stuff. And uh, Viv. Uh, hey, I'm an Explicking Wolf, Twitter and YouTube, anti-fascist historian and extremist researcher, and I talk about um cults and uh far right extremist movements most notably recently uh q or not yeah she's got um, an echo um, it's because she's um she's not muted like, in though uh, talk shit on my fellow leftists and she's got a mute. How destroying leftist unity <laughs> okay Hell yeah. that sounds like a contradiction but okay well uh but, oh, <laughs> 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 um obviously you know you've uh, had some experience recently with socialist fighting. Audience. i believe you had a, a take about someone and uh, it caused, well, we can get into that anyway. Um, well, it's a very piece... anti infighting take. I mean, what, what yeah. I said just then was obviously fucking obviously me. But... Okay. Oh, <laughs> Viv, can you, Viv, can you mute and whereby, please? Oh, for, for fuck's sake, sake look, look. You can't expect me to do Thank everything. Thank you. All right. It's not fair. It's Two good. Vivs. Um, and uh, last, but by no means least, Irene, no comment chick. Wow, classic. Do you want better. to give yourself an intro? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Irene, and I'm assuming I'm here to face some sort of like tribunal of uh, justice for being, you know, kind of a kind of a spicy uh, person in general and uh, conflict uh, prone. Hey, no, Irene. just kidding. Um, I am, a, you know, a lefty political streamer. I do uh, debates, debate analysis. Um, I host some debates and some discussions, and you know, that's a whole spectrum. We can get into that, right? Uh, but um, yeah, um, here on Lap Twitch dogs, and, and all of uh, you. soon uh, coming to your uh, YouTube and uh, yeah, book smarts. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I think ready for this topic. This is this is a topic that's near and dear to me. Okay, cool. Um, right, so I don't really know where this came from. I mean, I guess I guess you know, for me, when, when you look at online discourse, um, there are lots of things in play that affect how did. it goes. But one thing I can't help but notice is there's a few things that tend to happen. So you get like these drama cycles, right? So someone has a hot take, people disagree. We fight for a week about it. Um, and then we seem to forget about that. And someone else has a hot take and off we go again into the new drama cycle. And this seems to be something that perpetuated again and again. Um, I think there's lots of different things that play into this. Um, I think just having this panel and talking about it and sharing our ideas, who knows? Maybe we'll get spicy. Maybe we'll have a productive conversation. Maybe a bit of both. I'm not really sure yet, but we'll see what happens. Um, normally, I'd run this for three hours, but I know people are probably going to want to cover the debate. So I'm probably going to run the panel for about two and a half hours, and then I'll let everyone go. And if you're going to cover the debate, you're free to obviously do that. Based. Um, based, yeah, exactly. Um, so I think I think probably the, the most straightforward way to start out. And, and for those of you who don't know, we keep it quite broad. We have one overarching topic, and the conversation goes where wow, it goes. If it gets a bit stale or we're going around in circles, I'll throw something in there. To hopefully bring it back around. Um, so I'm just going to throw it out to each person individually. I'll give you like a minute just to give a, a outline some initial thoughts. Um, so I'll start with you, Viv. In fighting, what are your thoughts? Um, what, are we going to go around the room or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, so who's first? You. <laughs> oh, I'm first. Oh, yeah, God, you have okay. the honor. Sure, All right. Um fuck. Where do I even begin? Um I recognize that there are people I recognize that there are people out there who are gonna say some really dumb shit that you guys fucking disagree with. And it's absolutely right to criticize really fucking stupid ideas. It's absolutely right to criticize people who might have bigoted or or uh, you know, class reductionist or whatever takes. Um what I think is uh, possibly unproductive and more harmful than anything is uh is 
the obsessiveness with which some people pursue such criticism. And I would say that, like, generally, it's actually quite a small group that really, really go hard on it. Um, but, you know, when you have the small group that's going really hard and the larger group that's going, you know, kind of softer, it just creates this absolute cacophony that drowns out all other useful uh, conversation. Um, and not only that, it just brings a lot of animosity, venom, vitriol, whatever you want to call it, to the to the general community, to the immediate community. I don't really give a fuck about, like, the, the, the leftist cause and all that shit as a whole. I mean, I do care about it, but I don't care about it in terms of, like, the way that we act towards each other in this little Twitch community, because I don't think it has, like, a massive effect on that. Um, what I do care about is just like having a having a welcoming welcoming supportive space uh, where people can you know uh, learn and and discuss ideas and so on. Um, and honestly, I yeah, I really enjoy this community, and I think I think we're really good for like lifting each other up and and making each other better people. Um, and when we get too involved in like spending weeks upon weeks shitting on various people and it is it's a different person every other fucking week really um then we're only kind of hurting ourselves i guess that's my, my yeah I my take. Mm. okay cool um book spots um i would say that like uh kind of similar to viv i identify that uh there is a group of people that will pursue concession on issues that they feel very strongly about and i think that like I'm seeing two kind of paths. Either we like figure out how to fix those people, like fix or like fix that culture or get rid of that small group of people that continuously like stir the pot and do that kind of thing. Or we give some advice about like handling that. And so I hope in this conversation to talk more about like if you are on the receiving end of that, how can you diffuse that situation? How can you like let those people pass through without like causing too much harm to you or your community? Okay, cool. Um, Dima Mama? Yeah, um, my take on um, lefty infighting is um, it, it, it's more or less inevitable, and and a lot of it, um, though it can be obnoxious to see on your Twitter timeline and whatnot, is, is a natural process of different groups with different ideas bumping into one another and, and seeking to, to come to some sort of synthesis with that. And I think that's largely okay. In fact... Um, in a lot of ways, I think it makes the left stronger because we have a much larger, you know, diversity of ideas to our opponents. Um, however, um, I, I think that um, I do think that there are um, some times where uh, people go overboard. And I think that we should come to understand um, lefty infighting as uh, something that should be contained to um, not doing severe material harm to one another. Um, if you're getting to that point, uh, you're hurting uh, yourself and you're hurting the spaces that you exist in, which I think are actually important. Uh, me and, and Viv differ slightly on, on our, you know, on what we think about like left Twitch and whatnot. But, um, but I, I do think these spaces are, are are pretty valuable, and that we should work on building good interactions among them to the best of our ability. Um, but I recognize that people aren't going to fight. I think that a lot of what we have going on right now, a lot of the most egregious forms of infighting that get a lot of people really mad, are sort of the clashes of um, like like parasocial class clashes of individual communities. Um, like reigniting lore and sometimes you're not familiar with that lore and you can't be because you're not a member of one of those communities and it can get really annoying and because of the algorithm it can take over your timeline but I don't know that those represent um, anything much larger until they start to get to the point where people are being like materially harmed by them um, beyond just like Twitter disagreements where you're taking down people's channels or, or there's uh, attempts at that sort of thing. So yeah, I have a kind of a nuanced view on infighting, but I think that overall infighting is largely a, a sign that we have intellectual diversity on the left. And that's a good thing. We just need to recognize that there needs to be limits to that. And we need to strategically recognize that and work towards uh, controlling that. Okay. Uh, Nupi, do you want to throw anything in there? Uh, yeah. Just to, just to add on to, uh, I think it's, um, kind of like the, everyone's Thank kind you. of said it's sort of an inevitability I, I think it's uh partially because it's like so baked into the system i think i mean we have this kind of like 
uh, dunking industrial complex where people have this own incentive to like take other people down even if you like are fairly similar politically aligned like there's just there's a, a lot in it for you to try and uh, take other people down um, and also it's, it's great content you know I mean no, uh, good, I'm Thank waiting you. for the day where we get some left this in an actual coliseum and they you know f fight to the death um, in real life I, mean, I, think, I think that would be uh, outstanding <laughs> content I think we can just forego the politics entirely other than just like kind of uh, tribes to wave flags under and we can just murder each other in the, in the Colosseum in Minecraft. Okay, cool. Uh, right, Snowdrift? <laughs> oh, you know, I, I agree with Dima Mama. Um, that was supposed to be a joke, but I totally flapped it. But um, uh, yeah, I wrote the whole twit longer kind of about this, and scholars are studying this to this day. Um, True. No, True. But, um, yeah, I, it just, it does, like Newby pointed out, it is kind of seems to be baked into the system. And my recommendation for uh, a lot of content content creators on the left is to focus. Am I am I cutting out a bit? You are. You got a bit of a uh, mic thing going on. It's all right. Sorry, one second. It's, you can, you can sweat out in a minute. Imagine having your sound all fucked. Like, who doesn't get to get the good stuff? Okay. Whoa, whoa, perfect. whoa. It's not your turn, Viv. Back, back off, back off. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's fair. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, I guess, like, just my general recommendation is to, while critiques are valuable and very much worth merit for people who are on the left, it's good to try and refocus a lot of that energy and that vitriol What's towards our actual opponents, um, especially in like online spaces where you're trying to create content that's going to be entertaining because it is entertaining to watch someone get dunked on. But what is essentially counterproductive is, is dunking on people who are on your side, like almost incessantly. And it just seems to, um, to be pretty pervasive um, in leftist circles, at least online. And like Dima Mama, Mama pointed out, it is somewhat inevitable and merited by the difference of ideas and opinions in the left and i think that's fine um it's good to have disagreements but i guess just how we handle those disagreements is something that's uh that i find in question okay cool uh irene yeah when you say lefty infighting i mean i feel like depending on like who you're talking to like their mind's going to go to different places right there's going to be like all kinds of things that can be classed yeah, as, true, as lefty and fighting. Just to, like there's all kinds of things that can be classed as cancel culture. But just because they can be classed that way doesn't mean that they should be uh, classed that way. And I think it's important to kind of distinguish, you know, um, somebody standing up for what they believe in uh, or, or, you know, being attacked unjustly from, you know, the kind of petty shit that I think I think most people like from from just what people said on the panel. I think most people here when we're talking about lefty infighting, we are talking about, you know, not stuff of substance, but rather um, stuff that's more um, like we said, to drive the drama and drama cycle and, and such and um although there's no real way to like you know police that or, or keep that um from happening um i guess we can all um take care to add as little fuel to that um fire as possible uh, you know that being said you know I, I don't know how to like get out of covering the drama when it happens i don't think we can exactly like snuff it out or ignore it but yeah it's it's not it's not a good thing to see and you know, I mean, there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of uh, fights to be had on on things that you actually care about, and maybe maybe we should concentrate on those. I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, and uh, finally, ordinary snowflake. Yeah, so I, I definitely agree, as a lot of people have said, that intellectual diversity is something that we should definitely value on the left. I mean, like dialectics, at least you know, for for Marxists, are like part of the whole thing. Um, but, you know, I, I do think I've come to wonder to what degree when we're on the Internet, we can have that kind of productive discussion. Like, certainly it can happen. But when when you're seeing like people just kind of going at each other, I mean, the, the term good faith gets thrown out around a lot. But people really don't. If you really disagree with somebody online or if you're, they're affiliated with somebody who you have some kind of like, you know, they stand the wrong yeah. content creator, then you're you're not predisposed to interpret what they say very generously and i do think like part of cleaning up the discourse online could be to maybe painstakingly like try to interpret what each other is saying generously because we are in theory all on the same team and you know 
if somebody's not on your team, well, then you can make that determination. But um, I, I just I think ultimately a lot of this stuff is a lot better in interpersonally, like on in in real life, right? Like you know, in some sense, the internet is real life now. But you know, when it comes to organizing spaces, I think a lot of these discussions happen a lot more productively when you can see a person have it, having it. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Well. Um... There's a, there's a phrase that's been thrown out that I really like, but I want to delve into a little bit further. Um, and I'll just throw it out. We'll just get a conversation going. Wait, about can I guess people. what the phrase is? Yeah. Is it dunking if it's the 13 words. complex? <laughs> it's the 13 words. That's not the 13 words. No, I words. think you it's... mean 14 words. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah it, sorry. That's yeah. all good. Listen, it's good that you don't know I that. like to leave out yeah, one on mine. Exactly. It's more efficient. This is, this, is why, this is why you have me on these panels, Chuck. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah, the the, 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 industri yeah, the industrial dunking complex, I think, is a really good way of uh, of describing it, right? Um, and, and it plays into the drama cycle stuff too. But let's let's dig into that a little bit. What do we think of the industrial dunking complex? So I think, it's, I, like somebody in chat said, like it's a bit of a cop-out to say that these things are like systemic or whatever. You, but I don't think that that's the case. I think we need to like recognize that there are a lot of pressures on us. And that means that... Um, creating a better space yeah, Snowflake's take uh, good. and and having less of this fucking drama and shit it has to be a conscious effort because if we're just neutral about it we're pushed in the direction of attacking each other constantly and to that end i think um to answer one of book smart's questions or to attempt to answer one of book smart's questions as to like how we go about pulling people out of these kinds of cycles or like improving the space a little bit i i something i said to you chad last time we spoke about this was that i think that it would be really good if we had people not everybody some people are just going to be pissed off or what have you but uh people who provide a positive counter uh, to whatever negative thing they think is going on. So if somebody's doing like, uh, if somebody said something rich really shit about trans people, there's going to be a whole load of people going off on that fucking boat, right? But instead of joining in in the attack, you can join in in uh, a sort of positive reinforcement, right? Create a space where trans people are obviously welcome. Maybe do like a trans panel or something. Perhaps get involved in like a trans charity stream, whatever, right? And popularize that and try and get as much of the community involved in that as possible. Because I think people will naturally be more attracted to sort of positive spaces than negative spaces, right? They'll want to get away from the shit for five minutes. Yeah, it's, it almost right. seems like 60 to 70% of leftist content is like attacking the right um or the, or the left and like the other 30 is actually like uplifting the left if if that makes sense right yeah maybe <laughs> i think it's a lot more than that honestly i think it's like 90 hey, percent just Cruz, dunking on you. the other side or dunking on each other um and then we do occasionally have the odd charity stream and stuff which are really great the whole community comes together and services something really awesome um, but I think we can do that without having like a massive philosophy tube or H bomber guy esque fucking charity stream, right? We can just have small panels talking about positive issues, and the more people that are pushing uh, positive spaces uh, out there, I, I think I think the better you can make that community for sure. Do you think that's feasible though in this kind of environment? I mean, it seems like all I the incentives to point towards doing the opposite, right? Well, I think it's up to the content creators, and I think the more we espouse that as being the kind of action that you that you ought to take in such a situation, the more people will do it. I'm not saying everybody will do it, but I think overall we can we can probably balance out the scales a little bit. That's I fair. think if we want to like solve the cultural problem, we'll have to like just start making that stuff ourselves and stop like criticizing other people for like creating that content because a lot of us all do it. Um, mm -hmm. So I agree there. But I also think like the other half of this conversation kind of gets at what like Noopy Tunes is hinting that like, well, it's probably not going to change soon because everybody would have to do that. So like in the meantime, like what, what would you recommend as far as methods to like deal with what is inevitably going to come this drama? Like how do you diffuse that as a creator once it like comes upon you and you can't like go backwards and fix it? I mean, um, I think one thing uh, was that a direct question. Sorry, I was going to throw in my oh, percent. anybody can jump in. Now you go ahead. You haven't said much. Yeah. Go. Um and I don't know. There's a couple of things that I that I it's that have come story. up in my mind in this. I think like the idea of creating like a um like a positive like 
like a positive public response that's not like a direct critique of somebody like say there's like somebody drops a really hot take that causes a psych a drama cycle or whatever and then you say well you know i'm interested in this i don't disagree with this person but maybe i can run a a panel that highlights this issue from a positive angle i think that's a really great idea another thing that yeah. i think that's um that would benefit a lot of and this is sort of discussing the individual things that we can do to start shifting the culture um away from you know too much senseless um like infighting or whatever is i think that we can have um I do think it's possible to enjoy and recognize a certain amount of the fun in drama and spice and whatnot without getting lost in it too much. But we have to, we do have to make a conscious effort. And I think some of that is like having sort of a professional approach to, to, to the way that you engage on, on, on streaming sites at the very, at the very minimum. I think Twitter is a lost cause personally on that front. I don't think that you can do discourse on Twitter. I jet, like I did an entire video, like two video series on this, how Twitter is, um, I have a code for twitter which is no fucking discourse unless i'm going to make a very simple very straightforward statement of my own belief and then that's it then they can take it or whatever um and uh and other than that it's memes it's promoting friends it's sharing content that's what twitter is for in my mind however for twitch i think that we can take a a more professional approach sometimes in saying like like you don't need to nurse grudges you don't have to do that you don't have to you can like choose to say i'm gonna let this go even though i feel like this might be a bit of a personal slight i can keep it as that and then just continue to be able to work with people or be able to grant them the benefit of the doubt because i think that um and i think that this would benefit the space a lot i think there are a lot of people who come into twitch and um they sort of bring in certain social assumptions but in reality we are all workers on this site we are producing content on a like a contract basis for for a company whether we like it or not and i think if we see each other as fellow workers who even if we have disagreements with um most of the time we can probably overcome these in order to achieve our main goals i think that would actually be really useful that sort of mentality is what i try to bring to the table because i do know i openly admit i'm a very spicy person in general but i also don't hold grudges with people I just really don't like people. I mean, I'm on a panel right now with a lot of people I've argued with in the past and um, you know, that's, that's okay for me. And the way that I do that is by looking at it like, Hey, this is a work. This is a workplace. It's a weird workplace, but it's still a workplace. And these are my coworkers that are ultimately trying to make their living. And um, I think that allows me to say, Hey, drama, this drama part is going to be like, if we're going to engage in a high drama stream or something, that's for the show of it. And there's also certain types of drama I won't engage in. And like, Again, that comes from that thing of professionality. If I feel like a certain type of drama or a certain setup is going to lean way further into making people feel bad or hurting other people, unless they're like my abject enemy, like a Sargon or something like that, then then I'm like not going to engage in that. There's just there's no point for it, in my opinion. I, I like that. I, I really I... like the idea of like, you know, at least for the stuff that happens in panels, right? You know, the, the stuff that's not like, you know, behind the scenes stuff like that makes so much sense. And I appreciate the fuck out of people like Demon Mama that can that can go hard and can be unapologetic. But then at the end of the day, you know, they don't have to hate the person that they're disagreeing with because there's absolutely no reason for that. And uh, yeah, that 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 definitely goes uh, towards uh, solving, uh, oh, you know, part you, of the problem. I think least. sometimes it can be very difficult to know how far the other person is willing to take that kind of like performative argument and uh yeah and and i would say that i fucked up recently with irrelevant in in estimating that um and and i would say demon mama's definitely fucked up like that with me before as well so like yeah it's it's a difficult thing to do but i suppose like hey thanks for the communication follow, best manager as with any fucking relationship is important in that respect, right? Like if somebody's really pushing your buttons and they and and they tell you that, uh, then you kind of have to you have to listen and reassess like where you're at in the conversation and whether this is like productive, entertaining, or or is it actually just like making uh, the other person involved feel like shit. And I think another thing is when we lean into our characters and stuff, particularly nah, if you're de nah, debate people and you're you're going hot and you're going in, I think emotionally people get lost. And this is something I see in my reviews a lot. So when people tell me like, oh, I have standards that I'll uphold when when it when push comes to shove in those places, there's lines I won't cross. Like 
uh, uh, most of the people that say that and they like walking those lines often fall and, and they fall like uh, almost every single time that they get super heated. And so I worry that in the very scenarios when this is most likely to happen, some of these rules or recommendations really won't help a creator because this creator will have confidence that they can walk that line. But when push comes to shove, they're emotional. Somebody's, you know, stepping on them in a panel, said some shit. They get all bubbly in their chest and then they just let it out. And I feel like it's it's tough to avoid that. I think we make a habit out of being inflammatory all the time. So as our emotions boil up, it kind of makes that even worse for other people. Um, so I think maybe the habit of being inflammatory in general and behaving these ways in these places is going to lend towards mistakes where you like overstep a boundary or something like that. So maybe for situations like that, it's more practical to talk about like, how do we reconcile that? Because we all tell each other to DM each other, but that doesn't seem to be how it pans out either. Well, I, I think I think one of the things too is like, I don't know, for me, it's a little bit less about um, the individual like like things that happen in the debates i think there are extreme examples of this like i mean i think there are certain things that you can say to somebody in a debate that are so far across the line that it's just like you've, you've you're ridiculous like at that point um but for me it's more of like like i mean you get heated in debates and sometimes you get mad at each other and you say things and whatever but most of the time i don't think those like really cross like extreme lines and for me it's like i mean literally after I think almost every panel that I do, I, when I go and talk to my chat, I'm always like, you know, it's at the end of the day, it's a debate. We're talking about ideas that are everybody's emotionally invested in. And I think that like, at least for me, and I think at least, and I can't speak, you know, whether it's super successful or not, because it's really hard to judge these sorts of things. But I think my community, at least my community, at least understands that like, oh yeah, like this isn't something that's supposed to be nursed. In fact, when people come up with, I mean, one of the ones is like, there's some people in my community who you because i hear this a lot and this is another problem is like that's not the truth because oftentimes the reason you're doing drama is to reach out to people beyond your your core community because you're trying to expand so you're actually appealing to people that don't really know what you're about they don't have the qualities that your community has so i don't think you can attribute that to the people that are listening necessarily i, I don't does that make sense not really or, that doesn't really make that didn't really make sense to me. So what i mean to say is when that you're like, doing the drama stuff when you're on a panel and you're in front of people that are not your core audience i don't think we can like use principles or like qualities of your core audience on those people usually when you're being dramatic it's to a larger audience that's not why are you doing that face you're making a dumb face does this not make sense am i messing wait, up me? no i, I was just thinking uh, yeah. sorry I, oh, okay. I, I don't think my face was dumb. I was just thinking. No, you were like, what? What? No, what I was just thinking. Oh, my God. <laughs> Talk about inflammatory debate tactics, my friend. Oh, yeah, Demon I, Momo, if you're going to think again, could we get a nicer face next time, please? Yeah, I'll try. Here, let me just... <laughs> Let, less eyebrow furrowing. <laughs> Sorry to police your uh, police your facial expressions. No, I was just worried that it wasn't making sense. Because if it is, like, I, I can explain it that a was different weird. way. Um but yeah, I, I really think that these are people that are outside our communities. When we're appealing to like drama stuff, the people we attract like don't often stick around. They usually come into our stream for drama and then they leave. It's the people that see the nice side of us that stick around, not really the people that want the drama and stuff. I feel like those people float around and they're problematic in much the same way that the creators we identified that float around and cause all this drama are also problematic. Um, um, so I, I just try to... I just try to like separate that group out when we talk about these toxic like parts of the community. Yeah, maybe I can clarify a little bit. I guess it's that um, I'm not really like necessarily appealing to the idea that like, oh, my community in an individual debate is going to like do this or that or anybody who sees me in an individual debate is going to um, act in a certain way. But as far as people who do watch my content and who do come by, um, like I try to communicate them like my general philosophy, but also like I don't make an I don't make a um, a um, at least personally, and I know there's probably some people who think differently than this or people who don't notice they're doing it. Maybe even I do that. But most of the time, I'm not, uh, I don't try to like, lean way into drama. Like, I just am very outspoken. And I recognize that like, um, that like, eh, maybe. Sorry, I was th If I was people have thinking. critiques, like, go I for thought, it. I was just thinking. I don't know what's, what's going, going on here. This is okay. really weird. Wait, that was, okay. That was right. my, Turn off the cams. Right. Right. They're again too distracting. That was my thinking okay. face. Right. I wasn't being incredible. Listen, listen, wait, what? Listen. <laughs> what is going on with the faces? This wait, I'm really, con I'm actually genuinely confused right now as to what's happening. 
Okay, right, Liv is roasting you. I don't let, know. Let, listen, let me let me broaden this out a bit. Okay, I can't see Liv's face because her camera's too blurry. No, no, just no, okay. Fuck you, okay? It's not fucking working. It's tonight. really wait, blurry. Wait, 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 I literally wait, wait, wait. can't read your expression. That was not a reaction to your expression at all. I will fucking. Lick. Right, just stop, 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 stop. Right. Okay, <laughs> listen. I'm gonna broaden it out a bit because there's two people that haven't said anything at all yet. So, first of all, ordinary snowflake. Um, I just want to throw it over t to you because obviously you're a YouTuber, right? So. You're kind of coming in from outside of the the Twitch debate space and whatnot. What, what, I guess what are I just your don't thoughts get to on what we're talking my point. about? Yeah, I mean to be honest, like uh, I don't really watch a whole lot of debate streams, so I'm kind of like, I don't know. This is no, no shade to anybody. I'm a little skeptical about the ability of debate in of itself. Hey, thanks to for the follow, like, Asimov. Forward the ideas, but you know I could be totally wrong about that. I've heard people say they've had their minds changed by like debate streamers and stuff, but. I don't know. As far as like my experience with this thing, it really does just come from Twitter, which I absolutely mm. agree is uh, like accessible that you should not try to do debate on. But like that is where people most like normal, like non like like people who don't have a platform. Exactly. That's where they go to like have their voice heard on the left. Like, you know, unless they have like a little discord or whatever that they can go to. And yeah, as far as I can tell on that, like there there is no community standard of, you know, uh, upholding what what kind of how you react to people and how how you treat the people you disagree with like it, it's very much like this person exists exclusively while you're arguing with them you don't know who they are and then they disappear the moment the argument is over and you have like this exclusively bad like this person is a bad person in fact i think i'll block them and they they don't exist anymore and so yeah yeah that's that's a really interesting point and i think it touches a bit on like you know to to people to streamers or content creators can have a disagreement and it, it's not always so much that exact disagreement that's the issue it's all of the fucking stands on twitter that then go to war with each other and your entire timeline is taken up with like you know this content creators fans versus this content creators fans you know um and i think like is that productive ever like i don't know I mean, no, that's why I don't have much faith in Twitter as a discourse uh, platform at all. Um, I think that uh, significantly more actual functional discourse happens on, um, and, and sometimes it's still not good, but, but it's much better on places like Twitch and, and Discord even. Um, hell, I've even seen like good conversations evolve in the chat of a, of a stream, like because there's some sense of con like, like a continuity of conversation and there's like some live action to it the thing with dis with the uh, with twitter is like it's just first of all there's there's character limits there's algorithmic inputs all this sort of shit that just makes it completely unusable for that and i do think it produces exactly what you were talking about ordinary snowflake this sort of like i'm gonna block this person now because they've taken a bad take and i don't ever want to see it again i don't know if that happens as much on here um i don't know like again i i tend to be I tend to be, I mean, I, I joke a lot about being spicy, but it, a lot of times it's just that I am very willing to, to, um, to engage in like, in, in telling, saying my opinion, what I really think. Um, and, um, it's, uh, and that's just how I am. But again, I don't think that like, um, I don't feel like I go out of the way to like antagonize individual people like ever. And, and also I don't encourage my audience to do that either. Like, I don't know. Um, so I don't know. It's really hard for me to say, like, I can't really control what people's, um, instantaneous, like, um, perception of, of me is going to be in a single debate besides just trying to do better with my rhetoric and whatnot. Um, but I think that, um, I think that like, I mean, for example, a great example is a debate I've been on recently where the comments were split 50-50 between who was, like, the one who was right. It was literally, like, that polarized. I think sometimes that happens no matter what you go into the conversation with. And it's like, um, I don't know. I think a lot of it is, like, if we're talking about how we fix this thing on a cultural level, I think it is important for, um, like, creators to be willing to talk openly. Like, hey, like, I don't, like, I had a big disagreement with this person um maybe it's this take that i don't like or whatever but that's the end of it there's still a content creator there's still somebody else maybe i don't even like them but you don't have to you don't have to encourage armies of people to go after one another and i do think that like regardless of whether um you know like to touch on to finish what i was talking about with what book smarts had said to like regardless of whether people have one interaction with you on a panel or not if if most of the community uh, most of the creators in a space are 
approaching that in a similar way of saying like, hey, like we might have a disagreement, but that doesn't mean they're like a horrible person. They're not like the, the enemy or whatever. And I'm not going to frame them as that. If you refuse to engage in that, I think that it can actually encourage that culture that we're talking about of, of encouraging disagreement and even strong disagreement without like hyper essentializing people down into a single point or argument. Um, I I I, sorry, I just want to throw it over to uh, Snowy from Moon, give you a chance to chip in with something. So, Snowy, uh, what oh, was sure. your thought? Yeah, um, I mean, with Twitter specifically, um, for me, it's become be a like bad. a practice where if I, I see no something that I think is like really disagreeable or just really dumb, it's so easy to like go in the reply and just be like, uh, you know, shut the fuck up or something like really aggressive. And so yes. I'll like type that out. And then I'll delete it, that. and then I'll be like, okay, is this worth responding to? And if so, oh, no. how can I come oh, no. to this at least with some charitability and, and graciousness? And and based off of the response that I receive, that basically defers to um, whether or not I'm even going to continue the conversation. Um, and I've actually made um, like friends with people on Twitter who I very staunchly disagreed with, but we both kind of had a a fairly mutual and respectable back and forth and you know it turned into like us being mutuals and being friends but uh, it's also worth noting that like none of these people are like neocons or people who are just outright despicable um these are just people that i have some small disagreements with and and maybe lean to my side of things so i think it's just really important to when you maneuver on these uh platforms which uh, what's the word I'm looking for, which um, which lend themselves to the, the culture of like just dunking and just uh, trying to feel superior to try and just like take a second, think about it, is it worth it, and then go from there. And also muting is like way better than blocking in my opinion because you, you don't give people the vindication of being blocked because you just don't have to deal with them. So... Um, I mean, yeah, I was going to say, like, what what is it about fucking the Twitter where someone gives you, like, some snarky reply and immediately you're just like, well, fuck you. Like, I'm going to fucking light you up right now. Like, where, what is that nah, about? No like, way, I don't Smith. experience it with any other I know you're joking. Media. I don't know. I think also worth noting is, like, what is it with the dudes who, like, when they get blocked, they just post it and they're like, ha! Got blocked. It's just, yeah, it's ah, like a. Um, it's, like an it's like it's like oh well done. You irritated get... the other person to the point where they were just like, I don't want to deal with you anymore. Congratulations. Do those people <laughs> have like a trophy wall somewhere on their Discord where they just post every time somebody blocks them? They're just like, yes, victory. Yeah, no, I mean, I know what you mean. Except I have the opposite, ex uh, you know, um, experience from um, Chud and Snowdrift. Um, when it comes to Twitter, uh, my finger, when it goes to hit send, it's very, very heavy. And most of the time, it'll be mm. too heavy to actually send, especially the spicier it is, the heavier my finger becomes. Now, obviously, when it Gifty reaches a certain pause, threshold, right? everything gets sent, 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 sent. You know what I mean? When drama's like for real and inescapable. But yeah, I tend to yeah, hold back um, just crap. on Twitter just because I, I come from the 4chan culture of argumentation and um when shit goes that nasty on twitter you get unfollowed so i just like like um who was it demon mama saying that like it's just not for uh it's not for discourse i totally agree it's for maybe like a small disagreement but like i kind of keep it at like you know two comments because nobody wants to see their feed fill up with yeah. comment after comment after comment yeah, of a i'm like i'm like genuinely worried because i've got like people that i i super fucking respect who now follow me on twitter like i've i don't know i've achieved some pretty fucking awesome follows over the last couple of months at least like you know personal yeah, follower goals right of people that i that respect later, and i'm just it? like jesus nice. every time i go to hit tweet nowadays i'm like oh god what if this is the one that makes them unfollow me <laughs> you know, for it's me, really for bad me it's that twitch it... that's for it me it's sucks, twitch that's the platform yeah. that i've seen I, i've been surprised at how much people can kind of come at each other like show up in somebody else's chat and you know be kind of challenging and then get in the discord and by the end of the discord conversation somehow their drama solved and they're laughing again and they respect each other it doesn't always happen that way but i have seen that like on twitch a lot more than say on twitter on twitter i feel like it usually just ends in a block because it's it's right there and somebody's making you mad and you either feel good hitting the block or you feel good posting their block and yeah and that's usually yeah, but we like are i mean like for instance 
instance, yep, uh, Rocket Chansky watch and my uh, beef, you know, that got solved by a mod talking to her and essentially explaining the situation. Yeah, stick and, around. We'll you know, answer questions and calm down and I calm down. You know, that was a Twitch thing. Uh, if that had been on Twitter, you know, I can't imagine it, it having, uh, you know, gone down like that. So, yeah, there's something to be said for the, you know, specifically, I mean, as much as I hate the category politics, you know, that's kind of the culture is to talk things out, is to be like less afraid to like actually engage in, you know, um, talking to each other. Because like the, uh, the other option to have it out on Twitter is just like, I, I don't know how to stop those disagreements from going way south really fast. So I just don't have them. I think it's beyond all of us to do that on Twitter. I, I can't even remember the last, like, good faith discourse conversation that I had on Twitter. It's really hard. And that's even with me, like, going, like, out of the way to try and not, like, antagonize people on Twitter. It's just, it's so easy to to misinterpret. And, again, like, I again, like, the, the algorithm is that. But but I will say, like, I've had so many good faith discussions on on um on Twitch and even some that I didn't feel were that good faith have still been okay because there's a different element to it. And while there are still um, a lot of sort of incentives to, to stem drama and whatnot, there's also like counter incentives. Like um, for example, on Twitter, it doesn't, most of the time it doesn't fucking matter if one person unfollows you, if you piss them off or whatever, one person unfollowing you doesn't even, it doesn't register within the system of Twitter. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but on Twitch, if you really have a horrible conversation with somebody, you might not never make stuff with them again. You might not, they might not want to like commingle with your community. And that can actually, that actually means there is on this site, some type of um, structural incentive to kind of get along. And um, I noticed that like, this is something that I've noticed and what motivated me to go back and do my whole videos on Twitch, on Twitter when I did them was that most of the big beefs that were happening in this space and on YouTube were started on Twitter. And then they carried on to people talking about the Twitter drama on their stream, but never actually engaging in a conversation with that person. Um, and then it would then, of course, the fallout happens of the community smashing into each other, which I, I think personally, that is my biggest like issue that that carries out of twitch which is that people's communities go onto twitter usually and then like beef with each other and i don't know i i i don't know how exactly you beat that i think um like i do think to a certain degree like um people like panels people like debating people like fierce debate on here it's very clear like a lot of people like that and i even enjoy that personally um sometimes to a certain degree um but um but I think that there is a problem of like in like small communities building up like lore with one another and then continually going to war. And as both communities grow, then the, the war gets more intense. And there's this like long, again, this like huge list of things that you're like, oh, how do I even parse this anymore? How could anybody coming into this even know? But if you become a fan of one of them, maybe you join in and just say, oh, well, now I'm on this side of this ever never ending conflict. I can think of like a whole That's bunch true. off of hand that have happened just like that. That, 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 you know, in my opinion, that unfolded just like that, where it was, a you know, some slight, some perceived slight of one creator, and then the fans get mad, and then the fans start getting mad and mad and mad, and then the next slight happens, and it's the new entry, the new installment, and it's just these two things that occasionally blow up, and then it goes over onto Twitter, and they blow up again. Yeah, uh, Catherine put it right. It's like a fucking for the follow. blood feud because it's just it's. Thanks for the follow, it tends to be Happy like to have two you here. Communities or two content creators that just fucking go at each other's throats like constantly, um, and it it just draws out a lot of fucking vitriol and stuff. And that's why I say like I I don't think that you're gonna persuade those people to stop fucking doing that, right? Like yeah. I, I I think the only way yeah, that you Jango's can like, Persuade them from Love your stuff, uh, persuade them to stop doing that is to stop rewarding it, which means that you have to create some other space for people to go. Like I said earlier, and if they'd much rather be in a space where it's sort of positive reinforcement rather than like negative back, like they're going to enjoy that for a little while, but it gets tiring very fucking quickly, right? And once people start getting bored of the drama and start moving over to other spaces, like I feel like that'll disincentivize that kind of behavior as well, you know. And people might well, just be able to drop shit. <laughs> when we said leftist infighting, are we only talking about drama stuff or are we talking about some substantive issues that like because of the way the conversation goes creates like divides uh, ideologically in these communities? 
Because I thought I thought uh, we were talking about that. Because well, I think that's substantial. Right, you can talk about whatever you like. Anything within uh, okay. infighting, go for it. Well, well, because they're two very different things. So if you guys are talking about drama, all this stuff is true. But when we get to like, hold up, what happens when in that Twitter beef we uncover a belief? That, it, that the community is actually torn on that only came up because of the Twitter beef, right? Because of arguments that oh. came up on Twitter. And then when creators have hours and hours to discuss it on Twitch, when the rhetoric doesn't improve or when those arguments actually don't improve the way we would expect them to, that's when we start having some serious stuff. That, that's when we have hours and hours and hours of content dedicated to arguing out these things because people legitimately disagree. But I feel like that's very different from the drama stuff where it's like, I hate this creator. Can you believe that in DMs they did or on this panel, they said this bullshit about like blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I feel like that's very different than like, oh, we legitimately disagree about this like political. I don't know. Thing. I think they're definitely, I think they're definitely connected. But I think there's got to be a line. I agree right? Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm never, I'm never going to fully agree with like any, any auth comms out there, right? Any authoritarian Same. communist. I'm never going to fucking agree. Um, like me and a lot of the liberals on this platform have some very substantial differences. Me and Destiny, Bastiai, uh, Bastiai, Bastiat, um, fucking, uh, I'm really important. Like we have some really, really fucking big differences in how we see things. Um, IRI seems to periodically block and unblock and praise and hate me but uh me, me and bastiat and me and destiny go along like pretty much okay right um and and like even with those huge ideological differences like there are uh there are certain fundamentals that i think we have in common um yeah. that i think that we can that i can at least i can kind of like cling to but every but the problem is i suppose is that everybody has their everybody has their line right and it's not it's not the same for everybody um and i don't know uh i think that's a way more fun place on. right like a more fun place to talk about is where do we draw that line like for you it's authoritarian <laughs> people but some of these lefterly people it's like well if you support medicare for all instead of this other initiative or like stuff like that or well if you're actually supporting this like uh candidate or this policy like I, I'm interested in those where we have contentions about like where that line of like I'm not talking to you anymore is because I feel like we don't often talk about it that way, but those exist, and I feel like yeah, that's I what's causing well, that's, part of the drama. That's what I mean. I mean, it's, it, for me at least, it's like fundamentally, if you're if you're authoritarian, uh, if you display uh, over an extreme bigotry, you know, something that I don't think can be sort of like. Uh, sort of talked through or you know um then then at that point i'm like fuck you you know you're out of here right but as long as we agree on these sort of like fundamental principles of like you know people deserve equality regardless of their immutable characteristics uh and authoritarianism bad then like i i i can pretty much i can hang with you i think one of the things i said in the twitter thread that basically got me fucking cancelled and blocked by a whole bunch of uh, folks uh, was that like 90, 99% of the people that you meet IRL are going to be garbage apolitical libshit capitalists right because it's the only fucking thing they know they've been indoctrinated into it their whole lives it doesn't make them bad fucking people right your mum's probably that your dad's probably that and if they aren't well you're really fucking lucky yeah right? yeah i agree I so you know you've got to um, we can talk more about i think that too to afterwards. a certain degree give people some leeway it's not necessarily about the the finer points of doctrine it's about being able to agree on those sort of fundamentals right and at, at least as long as you agree on those you can kind of work together on some things so who here has drawn the line around somebody else on the left where they said i'm not going to talk to this person even though at the fundamentals we agree on like most stuff and I, i'd be interested to hear who's done that and why <laughs> because that that might be more like because yeah. we're talking about leftist infighting i'm wondering what, <laughs> which of your fellow done that. I've definitely done that with people that I actually do still agree with on the fundamentals. <laughs> I mean, I think but that's more of a personal beef, right? I think there's like personal beefs as well, which are f perfectly fine. Like you just clash yeah. with somebody. Sometimes it goes beyond just politics about that being a problem. and it gets really like personal. And then at that point you're like, okay, fuck this person. I don't care what their politics are like, just fuck them, dude. I hate them. Yeah.
Yeah. Okay, but we just you, talked well, about how that is a problem. We need to not do that. So like that's why I'm pointing the finger there. Is like we just said that we have to stop I doing. No, that. I don't think. Well, I don't think that is a problem. I Demon think did. No, no, no. Hold on I a second. Let me clarify because I want to comment on to that. Um, with with I agree largely um, with a lot of what, what what Viv had said. Um, in that I don't know that all of these things are completely separate. I do think that there are some times where um, personal beefs. Um, become justified by like larger issues um, like they'll say oh this is why this is what we're fighting for and that is something that I have a big this is where I think that we can draw this line that you were you were touching on there book smarts because I do I think it's perfectly fine for a creator to not want to associate with another creator and think they're a piece of shit um, like there are some people who I like just cannot get along with like it just, it's just, I, it's just they're just mean or whatever and I think it's fine but just say that. Just say, I don't like them. I don't get along with them. We don't agree. And you don't have to always couch it in like a bigger political thing, but that does happen a lot. So I do think that there is a distinction because I, because I mean, like, I think it would be ridiculous to expect every, um, every content creator to get along with every other content creator on a personal level. There are sometimes yeah. completely irreconcilable differences that you can have with another content creator where it's like every time you talk for one reason or another, you just start insulting each other. You hate each other's guts and you yeah, might even agree on a lot. Those differences don't necessarily have to extend to like the broader community, right? Absolutely. The idea that you don't like somebody, therefore everybody else shouldn't like them. You know, I could say that about, I don't know. Um, fuck. So, uh that's probably a bad example um Zanderhal, right Zanderhal, i've had a lot of i've had a lot of fucking fallings out with don't really have a huge amount of respect for the dude like i i i i just don't like him on a fucking personal level i don't like him um and you know that's the thing but like personally i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be going around saying hey well you shouldn't fucking like Zanderhal, right like if you like him then there's something seriously wrong with you because like fundamentally i think he and i preach similar things there are some things I we definitely disagree on but we preach similar things and like if you want to go and fucking watch sand Al and then you want to come and hang out with me that's that's totally that's totally fine by me you know i i think that's crucial because i mean there's just way too much use of the tool of excommunication um i always talk about mark fisher and like that was one of his things in the vampire castle uh, as everybody knows i'm not a huge fan of it overall but i do think he was touching um on some real problems and uh, one of those is our tendency to pick up the tool of excommunication first and do just what viv was talking about which is like cut try to cut somebody off by um you know pressuring our friends into <laughs> Thanks, uh Rebecca. into cutting them off too and and you know mm -hmm. kind of using that like you know, tactic of, of like, you know, the idea that you can just like excommunicate everyone you don't like out of your life, I think it's a really bad tactic. And it's really harmful for the left, because, um, you know, like, 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 like we've said, like, there's some people that just aren't going to get along, even if there's nobody at fault, even like with like Curio and me, like where we just like rub each other the wrong way or whatever. Um, you know, it's just like, maybe there's nobody at fault there, but we're maybe never going to get along. And that's fine. But like, if I started, you know, kind of being like policing people's follows, are you following, you know, this person I don't like? And yeah. I think the problem is, once again, like I said, I think there are a lot of pressures on this platform that push us into uh, engaging in confrontations with these people, right? It's like, hey, so you don't like such and such a person, notice. why don't you fucking debate even them on it, you know? And it's like, th there's a lot of impetus to like engage in that kind of content because it's really rewarding for both of you, in fact. Um, and like maybe you just don't have to do it like if you don't get along with them if it's going to be harmful to both of you like mentally and emotionally yeah this is just a tougher don't fucking issue get involved with it you know unless you think there's some broader good going to come out of it it's a good it's unless a good, you think uh... that person genuinely needs to be like excised from the community <laughs> because they're like dangerous or whatever you know there's no there's no reason to like put yourself through all the bullshit um, yeah so so what i think like we're kind of coming back to is this idea of like if you are a content creator and especially one with a big following is that you can have your personal disagreements and disagreements and grievances with someone 
but it's not so necessary to make it public so that it just becomes this all out like stadium brawl between your stands and theirs. Yeah, I don't know mm. if it matters if it's public or not. Yeah. I think it just needs to not be the focus of what you do like while you're in this space, right? Like if 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 you're like, right, I'm now I'm gonna plan out a stream and I'm gonna talk about why I fucking hate such and such a person, you're probably doing your community a disservice. You're probably creating some fucking drama that doesn't need to be there. If you happen mm. to be in a conversation like this one and you say something along the lines of I just don't fucking like Xander Hall, I don't have any respect for him. But like if you wanna go and watch him, that's fine. Uh, and you want to hang out with me that's fine like that's a very different situation i think like i'm not there's no fucking crusade being called there you know whereas in the yeah. other situation it's like legitimately trying to manipulate the community into an on uh, ongoing confrontation uh that will you know create future content or future opportunities for things to talk about down the line like what's the point what's yeah, the point I'm mad in too. Uh, in the things that you're going to be talking about down the line. Is there any great point to it? Are you making the community a better place by bringing these issues to light? Or is it just some dumb fuck personal beef that honestly, like, everybody could do without being involved in? I think there are yeah, some... And I... Oh, go ahead. Do you... Give me just a second, sorry. Um, yeah, and I think what this kind of draws back to as well is that it is somewhat exacerbated and like the whole drama sphere and conflict that does tend to draw people's attention. So it's like when, when people personalize a, a, a disagreement that they have, or even feel that another content creator has done something uh, morally egregious or so on. Um, it's, it's somewhat easy to slip into an accusatory stance and to make it this public debacle that does bring yeah. uh attention and conflict and um obviously i don't think that's a good thing but i think it's a problem of of the system to a degree because as we talked about earlier it's great when we have substantial uh um charitable polite conversations but what tends to drive numbers a lot of the times is you know is the blood baths is the bloodthirst and um, I think people kind of fall prey into that where they're just like, well, I, I see what does well and I see what helps me um, on a fiscal uh, level. A so um, why not I think. further pursue that goal? Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't agree with that, but I can understand it's why some people do that. It's fucking content, isn't it? You know, if yeah. you actually have like a beef with somebody else, you can make content off the back of that for fucking ages. But like... I, like I said, it creates a really fucked up situation. Anybody see that? One thing that I think is a good example, and somebody I'll I don't that really mind shit talking. Later, Anybody see that shit with Boogie? You know, like, was it yesterday? Yeah. Like, yeah. Fucking Frank turning up to his fucking house and shit, and fucking Boogie pulling a gun. Like, who's in the fucking background of that shit, though? Right? Fucking Keemstar. When the fuck are people going to stop fucking, like, giving I want to talk the about time of day and allowing him to manipulate them into these kinds of, like, shitty situations for drama, right? Like, they're all feeding into it because it's, good. It, because it's you know, the, the community, like, fucking goads them on. Uh, it's good for engagement, whatever, right? They want to be involved with them. And, and, and I just, I don't know. I think I think we do need to identify when it's like legitimately doing people harm, right? Like, look what fucking happened to Etika. Like, that could legitimately be any one of us. Like, the vast majority of people who stream online for like hours at a fucking time. I I got news for you. We ain't fucking we ain't fucking all there. All right. None, none of us are all fucking there. All right. This is a really weird shit thing to be fucking doing. Okay. And, uh, and, and you know, legitimately, quite a lot of streamers do have, like, problems with, like, anxiety and depression, isolation. That's true. Uh, or even yeah, just, like, she's, obsessiveness. She's, she's right about because that. Because this is the online community that they spend so much of their fucking time in. And when that community becomes a toxic environment for them to be living in, it has an extremely harsh effect on their mental health. Never mind the other fucking stresses and pressures of streaming anyway, being in front of an audience constantly, constantly getting barrages of criticism and so on. Um, content creators like are genuinely in quite a vulnerable fucking position, I think. Um, you know, at any moment it can come crashing down, you can have that wave of fucking harassment, and if you're, you know, if you're not in a particularly good place mentally, then that, honestly, that can be fucking it right 
um and I, I i i think we all need to be a lot lot more mindful of that and i i, I honestly thought like after etica i thought there would be like a bit of a uh a, a sort of especially after etica and Re and Reckful as well i thought there would be like a a um shit just a change in the mindset of people and understanding that like just because somebody looks relatively you know uh, just because they're up there doing the doing the streaming and everything, this doesn't mean that they're in a stable or decent position. Even if they've got like shitloads of money or what have you, like yeah. I, th I think we all need to be a lot more yeah, considerate of, of that. Because the last fucking thing I want to see is like another is is another Etika or another Wreckful or or whatever. You know, like I don't want to see. I'm that. I'm skeptical if anything can really be done about this. It seems like um, a lot of this. I mean, if we look at someone like Wreckful or Etika, like. A lot of the people who are contributing to this kind of thing are sort of outliers. They're, they're not necessarily people who you can um, change with like social with social changes. Like they just it seems like they just turn up one day and they kind of feed into this uh, this kind of attitude, and then you get you know a, a new person the next day. Uh, it seems like a kind of a revolving door of shitheads, uh, desperate people with uh, nothing better to do than than to harass the streamer. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not just the streamers, it's not just the people harassing the streamer, though. It's the way that, like, other streamers interact with the drama that's going on, right? Like I said, Keemstar using these fucking kinds of things for his own aggrandizement, right? In, frankly, what I think is a fucking blatantly, like, I, sociopathic disregard for other people's well-being. But, yeah, like... I just don't think we're solving this half of it. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm just like be, because there's this drama half, and I just we're not solve. We keep coming around to that. I feel like we're looping back to like, but there's no way to solve this because there's evil people out well, you there. Like keep fucking looping around to it, right? What I'm saying is that we need no. To, I think there's people who care can make it can make a fucking difference, right? All right. Well, I'll chill out while you guys do like drama, drama. But I'm interested in talking like where we have substantive arguments or where we like disagree and like how do those communities diffuse oh. that. Because what we're talking about is something that you can't diffuse. Um, so I just don't know how, like, can, productive I can, I can, ideas it. No, really... I think you can diffuse it. And that's what I was trying to fucking say. Is I think that you can, like, not feed into it, not give people, like, fucking Keemstar the time of day, and create more welcoming and understanding kind of spaces, right? And, and, and preach that to your fucking community. I'm so on board with you, but... If is in a situation like that, you can reach out to them and, and kind of give them somewhere else to move to. You know? I feel like people like Keemstar kind of demand the time of day, though. Like, I mean, it's easy to say, like, just ignore him, but I feel like people like that, I'm not especially. Saying, I'm not it, saying ignore him. I'm saying, like, openly fucking reject him and create a create an alternative space or create alternative spaces where the people who are, like, involved in that fucking drama cycle nonstop, you can reach out to the people who you see as potentially being in danger, right, essentially, and you can say, you know, hey, would you like to come over and, and do something with our Ooh, community? We'll I'll have a short time to Let play me some that. games together or talk about something that you care about, you know? Just to try mm, and take them out. Support networks. Of yeah, exactly. Support networks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Um, and not just support networks, but other positive spaces. S sorry, so I want, I, 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 sorry, sorry, I want to throw over to um, Ordinary Snowflake. Um, yeah, yeah. Just sure. interesting, you know, because obviously, you know, like we said, you... Um, you, you know, sort of in in the Twitch panel space and stuff like that. As as kind of like an outsider looking in, hearing us talk about this, like, what's your perspective on on on, you know, this kind of things we're talking about? I mean, I I I don't have a whole lot of firsthand experience with it, so I, I don't know to what degree this stuff is, you know, fixable or whatever. But I, I do tend to think in a situation where you have a system where there are, you know, a set of people who are, you know generating opinions for the entertainment of other people and youtube has this problem too you're going to just have kind of this like cult of personality uh, you know around them regardless of whether yes. they want that or not and the result of that is is going to be that like the people get essentialized they they have these like fans that that are not quite you know, yet either crash my crash ride or die okay. or want to kill them and um I, I don't know if you can diffuse that in, in the sense that, like, if if this is a, a thing that people do where you, you have a person who is, you know, in a position of authority or, or is, is giving, you know, there, there's like that parasocial dynamic also, can you take that emotional kind of 
inspire out of that that, that people are going to develop i i don't really know like i think that all relationships have like a kind of weird emotional dynamic to them that you can't really control the energy of and it, it kind of takes like a a personal like that everybody in the Fair community enough. basically has to be invested in spicy, making we'll sure that things things don't go sour like every, there has to be kind of a, a community-wide agreement <laughs> that like we as the, the the twitch viewers we we will not do drama and i don't know if that's possible i don't know what kind of systemic change will incentivize that but um i i don't think it's a thing that like people hey, can just follow, like determine Gila. like Happy oh hey, my you. channel this is a no drama space like, you don't get to make that determination yeah well, and i think the reason for that is because you know and i think one thing we're kind of missing here is the influence of the market on all of this and the systems that are in place you know we say oh keemstar demands this well no that's not actually true the market demands it right like it thrives on conflict is capitalism bad like i'm sorry but it is um and and for me unless there's like a, an inherent change in the way that say the algorithms work or um you know there's a, there's a vast change in the kind of content people are, are drawn to to then consume more and more of i just i just don't know if we're going to see any any significant change in this you can have as many support groups as, as you like but without changing the system i just don't see I don't know. It just doesn't seem. Well, like I don't know. Why don't we? Why don't we at least try it, right? <laughs> like before we turn around and say, "Oh, that's not going to work," because the algorithm's just going to fucking break everything. Like, why don't? Why don't we actually just fucking try it? Like, make a concerted effort. Because, like I said, those pressures exist. That just means, just because those pressures exist, that doesn't mean that we can't try and overcome them or mitigate them in some way. It just means there has to be a conscious effort. You can't just sit on your fucking laurels and let it go. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, we is that, that, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, we, I mean, that's a current basically, and we can swim here. against that current and, and you know, probably sometimes we should, but, uh, we, we kind of can't always swim against that current because like, essentially that will end in, you know, the non growth of our, of our channels. So, uh, I think, I, I think you, there, there's gotta be some kind of balance, um, in terms of, you know, ensuring a, a certain size of platform your, for yourself and uh, staying relevant, and um, you know, making those uh, those tough decisions to avoid some of the, especially when it's drama that's blowing up a community that we care about. I guess yeah. I'm less worried about you know some you know shit outside of leftism if it if it gets you know if it becomes content or entertainment for somebody. But yeah, when it, when it's fucking up you know a community you care about, that's uh, that's when it gets worrisome for me. Uh, yeah. Okay. And and to, oh, to sort okay. of like weigh in, in in support of what Vivian is saying here, um, like here's what I'll say. Like like there's no there is no Keemstar of the left right now. There isn't. And that's good. Um <laughs> like can't be. I mean I don't know that yeah, I don't yes, know that there can be. be. Like I mean the thing is like I would there's a few people you could say maybe do like like too much drama a little bit or something, but there's no there is no Keemstar of the left. Like I I do think that there is some um, credence to saying that you can build a cultural resistance to that sort of thing. And again, I think part of that comes from us being willing as like the, the people who are putting out the content, who are, you know, collaborating and saying, all right, what are we going to participate in? Us saying, okay, well, like, let's not essentialize people. Let's not turn personal beefs into crusades. Let's like these steps actually can build cultural disincentives to the sort of things that hijack right-wing spaces where like, and I would argue that even though he's not explicitly right-wing, that undeniably Keemstar's audience is leans right-wing, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, there's a, there's an indulgence in that cruelty. That's more than anything that you see on, on, on the left. I mean, there's like, again, I can't even think the most, the most, the most, extreme example i can think of is like um the stuff that happened with contrapoints which was something i did a, a bunch of streams about talking about how the the response to contrapoints is a lot of times just 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 really toxic and totally unfounded um and there's some people have legitimate critiques but there's so much anger and noise that it gets really really toxic and bad and that is nothing compared to the type of um drama that you see unfold in other spaces that are more willing well, to well yeah no i mean we don't generally have people fucking swatting each other and all that bullshit right but for like... the most part yeah 
yeah. yeah, but I, I do feel that there is like a ridiculous amount of vitriol. I do feel that also on the left, we attract a lot of sort of marginalized communities and so oh, on. Oh, well, I'm glad and you're so here to hang out with us, it doesn't have Pila. to get to like keem star levels. We're going to do debates too, so maybe you'll want to stay here too. Legitimately, like, drive somebody fucking batty, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah, absolutely. 100%. So, yeah, I think we're dealing with a lot of vulnerable people, and we have to be, and for that reason, we need to be even more kind of cognizant of where things are going. Yeah, and, and to touch on also what Booksmart was talking about, about, um, you know, talking about where we do draw the lines. I mean, I do, I actually do think there are times where um, responses and even even what could be categorized as drama or infighting is necessary. I think there are some opinions that we should call out, especially if they are repeated and, and um, things that it's okay to say, all right, no, like I'm drawing a line. This person is not somebody I consider like an ally or whatever. Um, and we can, we can engage in this sort of thing. Like, I mean, for me, obviously, like for like hardline right wingers, I have no problem. Like I'm going to dunk on them as much as I want to. Like, I think that that's perfectly fine. Um, like I, I would encourage that. Um, and yeah, some of that is going to be my own arbitrary analysis of who I think it is. But I do think that among the left, there are things that I don't like consider, um, left that I don't actually consider or living up to any of the values or promote any of it. Um, I think there are like extreme tankies, for example, some, um, who I've met in the past who I would consider not allies and who I have no problem just being like, yeah, I'm calling this person out. This is absolutely abhorrent rhetoric, but blam. Um, do you agree or disagree that Trotsky is the reason why the Iraq war happened? Oh God. I don't even, I, I, don't, <laughs> I know like so little about Trotsky. It's like, damn. It's like seems like a whole thing, wow. but um, imagine thinking you're a leftist commentator and not knowing anything about Trotsky. Yeah, I mean, I know a little uh, bit about it. It's just not like, it's just not like I don't know. It's not so we've I, talked you know, a lot of really fucking theory. Don't come in here talking about leftism yeah, yeah, yeah. if you haven't read your theory. Ah, uh, yes. Shit. Yes, yes. So we talked a lot about like how to not be the cause of it. What do you do when you're on the receiving end of it? Oh, so I what mean, what do you do when a whole community is like pointed against you? I don't know. Like, I've never experienced that personally, so it would be very hard for me to speak from personal experience. I mean, um, if, you, like, my, I don't know, that's really hard because then we're talking about, like, if there's, like, massive accusations being levy levied against somebody. I mean, my main thing would say, like, my immediate response would be, I'm going to address this and debunk it if I can. And if it's non debunkable, then I don't know. Like, I think there are some times where you might, like, I don't know what you do about that besides, wet, like, just waiting it out and seeing, like, if it's something that's, I don't know, I feel like there are examples of people who've been, like, had egregious things thrown against them, and, like, I don't know what you can exactly do if somebody decides to make something up out of you, you know, about you completely, except for try to address it and debunk it to the best of your ability and show, like, hey, this isn't actually true. Um, so I don't know. Um, but again, I, I, I don't know, like, there might be people out there who think I've made an atrocious, like, really atrocious take. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that I've ever made like I, so I don't know. Let's ask Allison. I I was really interested because Allison opened up this entire thing talking about how normal people talk one way and people on Twitch talk another, and oh, I'm thanks, I'm Eddie's vibing Mullen. with that. Jello so I'm Biafra. curious, Allison, like, if you were able to like make the decisions for somebody in follow up to like some controversy, and let's assume that that's on a substantive issue, like they disagree with the position that you have. But the way that their fan base is taking it <laughs> is they're personally attacking you for other drama they've hey, dug up from your past that. for the, that the lore moment. that we've that other people have talked about. So if somebody's doing that, what what do you think somebody should do in that position? If the person the person who's the content creator, what they should do? I think okay, this is going to sound really glib, but it's not the way I mean it. Like log off for just a little bit. Like I think that we uh, like all together. If something is, some drama is happening, even if somebody's been accused of something bad, if they disappear for a while before they come back with their explanation and apology, I think that, like, we need to give people the space and ability yeah, to true. do that. Yeah, that's true. There's like, some there truth in that. There needs to be mm -hmm. a way that you can, like, ideally, Again, that's you why have I was saying weathering a support the storm. network that doesn't exist online. I know not a lot of people, or a lot of people don't have that, that privilege um, and, and, you know, aren't fortunate enough to, like, have a community that isn't online and and for those people like you know god help you um but for for people who if you are getting dogpiled i feel like that would be my response is i'm gonna go like burrow myself and my friends i'm gonna figure out is is this criticism i'm getting what part of it is valid what part of it's not valid you know let me just like 
because I think I think it's the avalanche of getting everything at once that's probably one of the biggest things. You know, you gotta yeah. you gotta turn off the faucet for a little bit. And I think overflows or whatever. What makes that impractical and a problem that I've noticed that's tangential to like the uh, the parasocial relationship thing is that some people cannot, not because their income relies on it, not because like they absolutely have to for some like, you know, substantive reason, but because this is their like home, this is their community, this is their friends. It's like somebody stepped in your house. It, it's like we have a boogie situation almost to use a really bad analogy. Like it's like somebody is fucking with your real enough. life. And, and this is setting aside that this is the way you make money. Um, yeah. And so that's where I worry is because the real life solutions we would give to this like are impractical for people who live online. Um, and I, I wonder yeah. what you do. I, I, um, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. And I, I think I think that like part of that comes from like we're helped by the fact that the Internet is is vast. It, it is infinite. Like, you know, if you're getting dogpiled and harassed on like, you know, Twitter or whatever, hopefully you have a discord that you can turn to or whatever. And if if every single space that you go to for for community is infected by that, I think that that's a question I don't know how to address. Like if, if every person because then it's like that is tough. That is a tough uh, question. Like the thing I, you see when when people are getting you know dogpiled or canceled or whatever in this way, it seems oh like God, no Dila, matter wild. what kind of apology, that's no matter how debate. sincerely it's delivered, like it doesn't stop the torrent. I didn't even see that message. That's of, incredible. Of incredible. coming for them, and so in that case, I'm just kind of like, I have I don't know what to do. I'm at a complete loss for that. I mean, if I was to give advice to individual streamers, like if I don't know that there's like a, a single systemic answer um, to that particular problem. If like online is if you're like very, very online and that's most of your life. I mean, I think a lot of us fall into that category to a certain degree. But I do. I would say that like if that's your position that you find yourself in as a creator, then tr try your absolute best to to actually build connections IRL that you can do, because that's something I think that it's important to have like a non-digital, like if you're in the, the business of creating content, like you need to have an IRL support network. It's just, it's it's like- I think everybody knows this, but not everybody is able to do that. Yeah, yeah. But I that's what I was hard, saying. Like, like, I don't know. Pressure on people. Yeah, I don't know that I can like, um, I don't know that I could like do anything, but, but stress that like, it's as important as having a camera um, to your ability to create content well, it's important, is. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily important to have like, uh, IRL communities. I would say it's important to have different communities. Don't tie everything to like one community so that you have somewhere else to go. You know, if you fall out, if you fall out with your fucking uh, with your housemate that you've moved in in with, you can go back and move in, move back with your parents if you're lucky enough, right? It's that same kind of thing. You don't. It's it's not an IRL online divide. It's about not putting all your fucking eggs into one community and then if that goes tits up like you have literally nowhere else to go and nobody to talk to if you get sort of rejected or, or if harassment's being directed at you from within that space. Yeah, although I will say that like I do tend to think that like having some form of IRL community is unbelievably important to your mental health. Like even I mean it yeah. is, but I wanna yeah. I wanna I don't know. I just want to caution against like saying stuff like, l like that basically, right? Where it's like, oh, it's unbelievably important for your mental health because again, you're sort of dealing with vulnerable people, vulnerable people who are likely to, if they are in that situation, maybe in the position where like online communities are the only communities that they can find. And what you're essentially Wait, saying to them is that they can't be mentally healthy, uh, without, uh, without having like offline communities it's, wait yeah we're, we will like be talking about that hopes a little there, and it's just and i think you're wrong as well i think that you can have like multiple healthy communities and healthy relationships with like people online and i think just practically speaking people aren't going to do that so we have to like figure out a way around that and i think <laughs> most people are just going to stay on here for as long as like physically possible as long as they can bear it and in the process, they get super emotional. They get pushed to the edge like Viv is talking about. And people engage with them when they're in that state. When they're in that state, they're most likely to be replying to all this shit on Twitter. And then everybody sees that and they jump on it. Oh, look, this person's replying to I mean, all I the craziness you, we have room to talk about I'm going to send a message. I, should so funny. Not, I think this is a part I of it. I should not have come on this, on Chud's channel, actually, 
when Dario was fucking talking before I took my like two month break. I knew I was in a bad fucking headspace. I knew I was not doing well. My anxiety was fucking up the wazoo. And uh, I ended up getting in that fucking chatting match with Dario and stuff. Um, and then and then basically I had like one of the worst anxiety episodes I've had in fucking years and I had to uh, take time off of I think Twitch we are because too. of that. Uh, that I think time this is an important discussion to have. I had a personal this bereavement as well. But like ultimately that's what kind of like um basically pushed me off platform for a while uh because i realized it was ruining my mental health but i realized this engagement was ruining my mental health before i got on with chud and this isn't chud's fault but i'm just I, i'm sort of saying like i think i think as a community we could probably be more cognizant of somebody being in a situation like that and mm. maybe not pushing them towards that sort of stuff. Chud said it was perfectly all right that I, that I didn't come on that night because I told him earlier in the day, I was just like, look, I'm not feeling it mentally. I'm, um, But then I kept getting all these fucking DMs from people saying, oh, Dario's saying this about you, Dario's saying that about you, you know? And like, um, I was I was in a really fucking bad headspace. It pissed me off. And I and I came, I came back in to defend myself because I didn't want him like shit talking me while I wasn't there. Um, and maybe, yeah, if you care about the person and and they're being pushed, like maybe they don't need to hear all the bad shit that's being said about them either. Like you probably don't need. Yeah, to be that's them. that that's true. I, what what viewers won't see is behind the scenes. There's like a network, not a network, it's the wrong way to put it, but there's definitely people who will make it known if you're being discussed on the stream, about, right? And um, you know, because me personally, like I never put pressure on anyone. I'm not like, oh, go on, come on my stream, you've got it. This, like, it's I just I like maybe maybe about. send someone a message yeah. in some circumstances, but other than that, you know, I kind of leave it up to the person. But I kind of wish case. I kind of wish you'd said no, Viv. You said you're not feeling too good. You should probably yeah, go and yeah, have no, But like, oh, you can, like you that's can do not that. your responsibility. I'm a well. The, the thing is, to, to like, be perfectly, to, to, to be perfectly honest, friend. to be perfectly honest, in the moment as well, you know, mm. you're like, okay, great. Viv's gonna come on now. There's I'll gonna be some can, spice. There's gonna moment. be some content, 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 content. You know, that's gonna be good for me. Blah blah blah. So thank you for the follow. I, I want to jump in here because I was going to segue to what no comment chick said with the the reality of the situation is you're going to do drama, right? So if you make your whole brand around drama, I do think that this is a responsibility you uniquely hold. If you're going to be somebody who's inciting these inflammatory conversations between people, perhaps you do have a responsibility to like double or triple check that they are like of sound mind to do it. And I think that's mm. kind of where we're leading is like, mm. no, reasonably, we kind of have this expectation that you're looking out for people. And we agree that people that are in the wrong mind are in the wrong mind for that. So they're not going to be the best, like, you know, uh, if you push them like that and you know that they're already. It's difficult to tell somebody that I do. I, because I can't, because I trust Chad and we have like a working relationship, you know, um, I, 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 I think if he'd have told me at the time, no, Viv, you said you were feeling really fucking shit earlier. Like, you probably shouldn't. This is not going to be good for, for you. Uh, I think I think I might have taken that under advisement. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm also like a grown ass fucking adult, right? And like, even if I'm going through a bit of a shit time, it could be uh, it could be like patronizing or condescending as well. Like from Chud's well, perspective, he could we... see it as yeah, he could see it as me taking it. Uh, like, I might take it that way or what have you we, you know we don't give the same leeway to the chatters that send these messages and could say i didn't know that they were on the precipice of this thing i think if you're putting someone in that environment where you know you're pushing them like that i don't think it's too unreasonable to say you have a responsibility to like double or triple check into that and i do think it means making hard yeah, decisions yeah. like stepping over somebody and being like hey buddy like i it would be so fun and i would love to roll the dice on that but this is the wrong kind of spice this isn't like a territory that i want to yeah. tread into because before it led to this thing at least now chud should probably have some kind of rule about a situation like that in particular now that he's gone through it but you know i think generally encouraging stuff like that is along the cultural solutions you talked about like creating shows with rules and premises that are more positive i think this is along those lines for the people I, that well, do drama I just mean it's, it's, little... it's difficult for like i don't want to put chad on the chopping block here because it's very difficult when he's in that situation and like uh, like i say I me being so. wait, well it's i mean for you you can't make that decision but i think he but, is but, wait, 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 well, no but that's the thing like he does how the fuck does he know like what kind of mind i'm in right yeah like, you said you I, 
Well, I be... messaged him earlier in the day saying that I was really not doing well, like, mentally, so I wasn't going to come on, right? Um, but then I said, no, actually, I feel like I'd like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm up 80s. to it. And I'd Check, like stick to. around it's after like, the conversation. We'll talk to, like, about this. I'm going to save this and we're going to talk about right? That could be seen as it. really, like, condescending or patronizing. I could take that really quite, uh, quite the wrong way. I think Maybe I probably should... wouldn't because I think we have we'll like, talk about a decent that. enough relationship that I'd be like, yeah, I got okay, hot takes I for you. Probably right, actually, or whatever. But that's not going to be fucking everybody, is it? And especially if they're not in their right mind, they might they might well react to that really poorly. There, there's another so problem here as well with what you're saying. Listen, Booksmarts, there's another problem I don't think you're considering. Uh, there's actually two elements to this. So number one is who will enforce this yeah. theoretical, you know, framework of how we're going to deal with this. And secondly, let's say we don't do that and I just go, right, I'm going to do the right thing. Well, there'll be other unscrupulous people out there that won't do that and they'll just fucking, you know, fucking bring on whoever. Like someone could be in the middle of a full-on mental health crisis and they're like, fuck it, I'll bring them on. And there's no I mean, regulatory you body. The line. You jump the line and say, okay, no, 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 hold on. I want the breakdown. Like, I don't think that that's right. We're not applying that same logic to the other things that we said about making more positive panels or whatever. Yeah, it's tough. It's a trade off. Other people still choose to be irresponsible. But we're talking about what is the responsible thing that we encourage for people. I think it's tough to say that that's an irresponsible choice to not platform that. It, just because somebody else goes and picks mm. that person up and, and and puts them on that chopping block does not in any yeah, way mean that I you should have then because it was just stuff. inevitable Other that it was going to happen. talk about stuff like this? Yeah, sure. I, I guess, I guess a lot the of different issue stuff I'm trying to here. highlight primarily is just this concept of like... We're going to be covering know, the debates later, for I, example. I can, I can live That's up to whatever important. standard I set or whatever's agreed, but there's always going to be people that are willing to come in and it could make the problem worse maybe because then people will come in and pick up on that fact that like, oh, then, you know, there's all these people that aren't willing to have these kind of spicy discussions. I'll primarily have those and then you just get like panels that are hotbeds of just drama and spice and viciousness and stuff like that you know yeah. i don't know yeah you can potentially be penalized for for kind of uh going by a higher like level of ethics because like um you know if you have like nick fuentes on and, and he and with another trans person and he just like you know cuts down that trans person says all this transphobic shit like that's probably going to be a whole lot more entertaining than watching to you know very well-mannered people like discuss things so what i'm saying is like the toxic environments are probably going to be more conducive to a better audience well yeah but which we means don't, there's a but wait, financial wait, wait, wait. incentive not to obey this a higher is, code of okay, ethics right? this is really dumb like we all fucking pretty much everybody here if we were if if they had like nick fuentes on their show i think we'd all be like that was really fucking irresponsible platforming right for the vast majority of us here we're just like yeah no we don't debate fuentes he's a piece of shit right we try and keep like full on fucking Nazis out of the lefty Twitch community in general. So like I I and there are constantly discussions around this surrounding panels like um Prime Case in the early days, although he's been very good recently at like trying to keep that shit, you know, out. Um and and Dylan Burns is sort of left and left and right panel and shit. Like there's constant discourse around like, is it responsible to have this person on on our show? And I think there's a lot of social um, social pressure to make sure that you are platforming responsibly, right? Yeah. But this is my point. You know, listen, listen. I see, you, I see you fucking in chat book smarts, okay? Chatting your shit, okay? But my issue is this, right? It's not. It's not about. I, I don't care. Like, yeah, of course, obviously, it's fucking obvious. I don't know why people are making brain dead arguments in chat. Obviously, yes, of course. If you choose to do less spice, you may potentially be financially impacted by that. That's just the nature of the beast. I get that, okay? I love child. But I my love issue is this, mad. is like, if we're so trying to good. build these healthier communities and so there's good. bad actors that aren't going to engage in that, you've got no oversight or no way of, of preventing but right them from now, doing you're that. one of those bad actors. You do realize that, right? You're saying well, if not, there's gay, well, no, I'm not. Actor, wait, 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 wait. How, how am I a bad actor? actor? How am I? Wait, wait. How am I a bad actor? I'm using how, your words. I'm using your words. I, Chud, I like you, but I'm saying okay. if you're describing, okay, I'll describe it. So okay. if you're describing this bad behavior, if this bad behavior that you're not engaging in, and you're saying, hey, if I don't engage in this, somebody else is going to do this for the spice, and they're going to get an audience. Some bad actor. And I'm saying, yeah, you're attributing that behavior to a bad actor because it's bad behavior. But then you're saying, no, I want to do that bad behavior because I want the spice Wait. and I want the audience. No, and I'm, I'm saying, not saying that at all. Then... I'm not fucking at all. When did I oh, say that? I don't want to do it. 
I, you know, in fact, this is something I've wrangled with myself. Just the other day, I was going to do a panel about something, and I thought, oh, I could get Wake the Beast on. He's popular at the moment. He's spicy, blah, 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 blah. Do you see what I mean? And it's like, I, I thought about it. I thought, no, I'm not going to bother. Do you know what I mean? I want but... Wake the Beast. I want him. I want his head on a fucking hey, a metaphorical hey. argument. Me and Chad were literally hey, just hey, talking so... about this earlier. He's, Chad said, like, oh, I don't think I'm going to do this thing. Like, you know, like, it's, it's just not good. Like, ethically like sure. he's talking about this stuff <laughs> all the time. Like, yeah, i'm not comfortable doing this thing that other people do on their panels because i feel yeah. like it's kind of you know but that's not, chud he doesn't have doesn't his go by my code doesn't have a camera much that's why i said earlier when i said i don't want to throw chud under the bus here because like the position i was in like a, a couple of months ago with dario like that was a really fucking difficult position for anybody to make a call on right um but I'm just, but I'm just sort of saying that, like, you know, in general, I don't know we can probably be more cognizant I don't know what you're on about right now. Having a really shitty time, reach out to them, try and provide positive spaces. Listen, if you don't want to watch, you don't got to watch. It's okay. Try and push them into I'll, I'll uh, furthering the drama. Don't worry about you know? it. I don't like, know what's going on. I, yeah, if, I, mean, I don't do. know what's going on. I just if, if Chud's a bad actor, then I totally am too. Because like I've had Viv come on when she's like, I don't feel great, and then later she was like, Yeah, I'll I'll come on if you still, you know. Like I've done the exact same thing. The only difference was that there I'm gonna wasn't. I'm going to weigh in on this um, here in a second. You know, this going on. You know, or, or it wasn't to the level that it was. You know, at the time that it happened there. So like, I mean, I've definitely been guilty of the same mistake. I think we do have a responsibility once we've experienced something like this to kind of be on the lookout for. It, but I don't think that you're a bad person, you know, um, for missing I'm it. Um, now. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't mean can, to can, can I can like jump it. in and say something? So I'm not saying that I personally think you're a bad actor, Chud. You just said that if if some other bad actor comes by and chooses to engage in this behavior, and I thought that you're associating that behavior with a bad actor, and so I said, well, that that bad actor would be you if you if you engage in that. So I was just using your words. I don't. I don't think you're like a bad, bad actor. Yeah, no, no, sure. No, no, but because uh, I know what it sounded, I, I get what you're saying. It sounded like I'm saying, well, no, I must do it because otherwise this other person would do it. My, my, what I'm, I guess I'm trying to say in terms of what we ought to do is like, how, yeah. how do we, and, and in fact, this is something that again, I've wrangled with recently because we were talking. Oh, me, I'll be molding Michael later. Don't you worry about that. Panel, this is just we a more of a... about getting all the panel guests together. Uh, all the panel hosts together and I've doing some sort of event to, to try and set some standards in but place. But I'll mold later like for that. sure. Um, I know which that's is still in the happen. works. You know, I think that could be a really Fucking positive thing. ethics board. Holy shit. <laughs> well, but I the, mean, the... <laughs> okay, like, like, okay, so there's a couple of things here. Like, I'm going to, like, okay, I'm going to charitably interpret Booksmart's argument here and say, you know, it's something like with sports. Like, if, um, yeah, if uh, if somebody if somebody comes on and ha like somebody comes onto the field and they clearly are like limping, you know, then it's probably a good idea to say, hey, like you ought to set this game out. Like I don't want you to get further. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going on here. <laughs> this is a weird panel. Um, but yeah, um, the uh, yeah, if you're like that. But let's be real. Like Booksmarts is obviously taking a shot at Chud there, and I don't think that's very fair because. Um, like yeah, I, I mean i mean sure That's I mean, wait, oh, oh wait a minute There's i get spice. it i figured it out book smart has been doing a bit since the beginning he's trying to be like oh look want, you all we want we don't want like yeah we don't want irrelevant fucking spice we want <laughs> spice to he described a rule and he's like oh that would be a bad actor and i'm like well that's what you're doing like what if you fuck was that person? english impersonation I'm you bad at English I got some more time with this. Is a, this is a bit, guys. I I'm sorry. Like this I is a just bit. I feel like I a racism done to me, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> some, Andy, some Andy Kaufman hours here. Yeah. Um. But what I was gonna say is that, like, um, like I don't know. Like, it's a lot harder to tell if somebody is, um, is like doing well mentally or not than it is if somebody's doing well physically. Like, there's a reason why stuff like um severe anxiety is called an invisible disorder. You can't tell this stuff. So a lot of times, and, and this is me defending Chud a little bit in this case, because it can be t hard if you ask somebody if they're doing okay and they say, yeah, I'm gonna come on. It can be hard to um to step in and go, yeah, you're actually not doing okay. I'm not gonna have you on. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want anybody, I wouldn't want anybody yeah, to do so, that. Yeah, right? so it's one yeah. of those things the where- point, the, point, the point I was making, right? And it's really, 
I don't know, it got blown out of proportion to just like, oh, well. I'm you know, always molding. If it wasn't in her right mind and she needed somebody to like stage an intervention and fucking drive her away in a straight Book jacket. Smart to like, that's not what I'm fucking Holy saying. Shit. My point, my only point was. That like, was cringe. I don't know. Maybe just, maybe like. That was cringe. Person or whatever. Like issues and, or, or like if you can see that like there's, there's a lot of stress uh, on them at that moment. Like m maybe just try not to like feed into that i guess right like just i don't i don't fucking know yeah, but i wasn't maybe. but yeah <laughs> i'm i'm I i'm generally pretty fucking stable okay i'm just saying that was a really stressful like i think th basically three months solid of like two communities going at each other where i was like sitting in the fucking middle of them you know, there was the whole thing with like fucking um, Kalia and Dario's community, then K Swiftly and Dario's community. Like that shit lasted for like months at a fucking time. And I was sat between both those groups, like attempting to somewhat mediate between them. And it oh. just, it fucking, like, it just ruined my mental health over the course of like months and months. So it's like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't um, like the way I'm being portrayed as some sort of like crazy fucking unstable person who needs to be like mollycoddled as well. Like that shit's really fucking annoying. Um, like, yeah, yeah. book smarts. Yeah. Um, sorry, <laughs> book smarts. I just, I just want to throw. I think, I think you know, there's. I, I'll throw it back to the panel because I want to stop talking about me. Um, but I just want to say this one final thing. I think the issue is there's maybe yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. of a disagreement I mean, there, right? I know some, we're a bit, a bit spicy. There. Listen, it's all good. We're all friends here. Um, I think she was talking about The reason about there's disagreement is you're looking at this from more of an individual perspective of what can like the individual do to, to, to mm. you know. And I'm looking at it more from what about the system? How can we implement this on a broad scale? Well, yeah, we have to discourage you know I mean? that kind of behavior, right? Like when we see it, we have to, we have to encourage analysis of situations that perhaps went wrong. So That's the kind situation of my take, with though. me and Dario might be a good example of like Lol. something that you and I could maybe talk That's about mean. in private and like later at some point or something. Or uh, you know, and 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 that we can kind of look at and we can go, well, you know, what kind Sometimes. of went wrong there and maybe like we shouldn't do this or we should do that like in future or whatever. But like as a community in general, we just have to like try and discourage that kind of behavior in general. And and that goes right back to what I said at the beginning, where discouraging that kind of behavior means encouraging the opposite kind of behavior, right? Because you don't have, like you said, even if we get some sort of ethics committee together or whatever, there's always going to be those bad actors. So, like, and, and you're not going to be able to discourage them. And, and by Playful trying to discourage them, you're going to create, like, unwelcome environments by... Um, creating another avenue of drama in we which you're having this night. conflict with this person about what they've done, right? We'd have to do it um, on Discord, So you, the but only yeah. real solution, like I said, I think, is to create those those opposite positive spaces or positive movements or positive actions, whatever, right? Um, yeah, I think definitely reaching out to people who are, like, having a really fucking stressful time or whatever and saying, hey, do you want to come to our community and talk about something that you care about rather than the drama that's going on right now. I think that's a really, really good way of dealing with those sorts of things. Right, yeah, so if I'm, if I, I'm, oh, go ahead. I, I think this idea, like it sounds good, like theoretically, but it's it's tricky because how you can measure that wasn't directed at you, Peacecraft. That was health somebody else through Don't online worry. spaces. Somebody like, else. I, it doesn't matter about a lot. It, it doesn't matter about the mental health thing. Okay, you don't have to you don't have to full on judge. I think we can all see when somebody's getting fucking dogpiled or they're engaged in some really vitriolic drama. Like we can see that, mm. right? We might not be able to see the full on effect that it's having on them. Well, we but can, we of can course, we always do. Anybody who's we in do a situation like that, this is, is a perfectly valuable conversation. The time of their lives. This right? is about not how to resolve that. Constant. Mm. So, so like I said, providing those alternate spaces so that they have somewhere to go, that like. Um, that isn't just full of fucking toxicity. I think that shit's important. Yep. Yeah. One hour Regardless of minutes. like what you judge their mental health to be at I'll any point, because they could be somebody who's just not affected by that shit, and they could turn around and say, "No, nah, that's all right. I'm having a really great time. Actually, I'm really enjoying the arguments that I'm having." And you know, you might yeah, misread the situation, and that's totally okay. fucking fine, right? Let them do what they want. But as long as as long as we as a community reach out to other people who are going through the ringer. Um, I think I think that would be a really good thing for us for us all to do, honestly. 
sorry. I know I talk a lot. No, no. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I think I think another thing we could look at is creating um, the the bureau for leftist streamer ethics, um, which would uh, have a a police force devoted to deciding whether people are mentally fit to appear on streams or not. I think that yeah, would be right? very effective yeah. and also yeah, definitely like, not ableist. You're, you're you're crazy. Go go like now. <laughs> There's some people in chat like, listen, I'm, I'm not the kind of I'm not I don't moralize ever. Like I don't tell people what they should or shouldn't do with their platforms. I'm very much against that in principle because it pisses them off when people do it to me. I'm just talking about these ideas. Like I'm not sat here thinking, how can I get it so we have this fucking, you know, secret police watching people's streams to report in and we cancel them if they do something wrong. Like that's not my fucking style. Do you know what I mean? Chud, but, it sounds like you're getting very heated right now. Do you need ten minutes in the clink? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's like, I was doing the Russian accent. It, Pick it, another accent. You know, th there has been Excuse discussions me. about this had, and and you know, it's kind of like, yeah, I I don't know. Like to be honest, I've kind of reached the conclusion that for me anyway, like I'm just going to do my own thing on my own platform, and if other people want to host spicy stuff and whatever, like that's up to them. Isn't yeah, it? He's yeah. probably molding a little. Yeah, bit. to me, like the whole point of this like ethics board thing, although I'm not really involved in it, is just that it's it's not like laws that you must follow or people will excommunicate you. It's more just like suggestions, and then that you might like people might criticize you if you don't follow the like important ones. But it's it's not like you know people are gonna fucking murder you for yeah. having someone on your stream it or just something. Just gets mad easy. I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to like have some set of like guidelines or ideas for trying Maybe. to host these you know debate or panel spheres like in a way in that's helpful past. and so like having a, a conversation which i don't have a huge to, problem with them though. um you know actual structural practical ideas where we can say you know here's how we should try to DGD maneuver person, in these spaces yeah. like i think that's a really good idea but yeah obviously like we don't need to you know i saw like i posted earlier was like uh, i saw you tweeting that until 4 a.m last night you're you're not allowed on the panel that kind of a that's like um yeah, books there are like direct I think it came from social DGG, pressure, yeah, originally, right? Which are so things fine. like, um, you know, fucking cancel mobs or whatever the so fuck you want to call them. Audience. Uh, uh, like direct criticism, call outs, and all that sort of thing. And then there's like soft, um, soft social pressures that come from broad cultural change within a uh, within a group, right? So it doesn't have to be direct in saying, hey, no, you absolutely cannot do this, right? But if everybody else around you is not doing this and the community as a whole is starting to think of this as a thing that they that you probably shouldn't do, then it discourages people from engaging in that kind of behavior like, overall, right? Like, I, I feel like that's the sort of thing that we should be aiming for more because I think that the direct cultural, uh, the direct pressure, the direct social pressure actually just creates like a huge amount of friction and creates new avenues for drama. Sure, sure. And, and I think um, I have a very shallow understanding of what this bureau or, or of ethics or whatever might be. <laughs> I think that's what they're trying to do is try to give some ideas on how we um, nurture and, and create these cultures which are more healthy and better um, for people engaging in, you know, the Twitch sphere and so on. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, like trying to um, directly order people on what they should or shouldn't do is, is not ideal, but that you can also have like a set of like, here are, um, you know, just, I don't know if guidelines is even the word, but suggestions on like, what are good, healthy ways to maneuver online and like having that to kind of look back to isn't necessarily oh, harmful God. as you know in most cases i i think i agree with that i think that having guidelines you know whatever you want to call them it doesn't necessarily mean that like somebody who doesn't follow it needs to be like you know kicked off you know the left side of the platform or whatever but like i i think a lot of people when they they start streaming or start you know something they don't have like a really clear idea of how to do something the right way or and like you know th there are all these ethical concerns that everyone's been talking about that might not occur to somebody who who's never done this before and having some kind of baseline suggestion of like hey you might not have considered this but you know maybe if somebody's getting dogpiled on twitter don't have them on your screen because it'll you know cause that to get worse in some way or whatever uh sorry i don't fully understand that part because i haven't experienced that but you know I, I don't think it has to be like authoritarian to you know give people a paradigm 
Yeah, like a book. Somebody could write a book about hosting panels on Twitch. I mean, I think that is one of the things that like um, that like that we're encountering is that like, I mean, this is a this is sort of a frontier. It's a new form of media that is like there's been video game streams, but politics streams are becoming more popular, and leftist politics streams are their own whole thing. Panels are a relatively new thing that's happening online. So there's there's going to be a lot of experimentation and learning and whatnot. And I mean, I think you're right that, that that it doesn't necessarily have to be like that sort of thing, but we can, we can create um, like easily accessible, even like I would even argue, say maybe open source or something. Um, like here's some suggestions I have from my experience running panels or whatever. And then you can publish that and share that with people who are coming new to the space or whatever. That might be really, really cool. The conquest of yeah. Twitch. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so like, like it. what's that? And we solved it. Infighting solved. Awesome. I'm glad we've done that. Um, now what? I don't know. I mean, Let's get back. To <laughs> <laughs> this is lame. But, but I, I, I just want to talk about how Demon Mama's rhetoric fucking sucks, and she needs to like, uh, we need to gang up on her and kick her out of left Twitch. Bring it. I Can we cancel anywhere. Demon Mama? Oh, all right. If you want to cancel yeah, me, bring it. Was, bring the cancel. On this panel. Cancel, cancel, cancel me, cancel me, cancel me. Okay. Right. I've got something we can talk about, okay? Uh, it's it's this right. phenomenon, and I think it's something that needs to stop. So, basically, and, and this... Uh, does anyone else get the feeling sometimes that some people are coming to the table of a discussion, of a stream, or, or any piece of content, a YouTube video, even a tweet, but you get a whole bunch of people that are coming to the table that are insistent on interpreting what's being said in the absolute least charitable way possible, just so they can be fucking angry and righteous about it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that there's yeah. that for sure. I think that, yeah, for sure. And it's shit, isn't it? It's fucking garbage. Can we just, like, I don't know, like, what? how do we fucking fix that? I don't know. That's a tough one. <laughs> Better tweets. I mean, I do think it, it happens on Twitter a lot, but I, I think it happens in a lot of spaces. And part of that is just like genuine, like better, better debate tactics. Like you waste your own time and everyone else's time if you go in and intentionally misrepresent somebody's argument or, or don't even put any effort into trying to understand what they're trying to say. Like that's bad communication in general. I mean, I think it can happen to anybody. I think there's always times where people are going to talk past each other or whatever, but we can also like personally endeavor to ensure that we're doing the best to interpret people as charitably as possible. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the things that we can, we can encourage one another to, you know, Hey, like, why don't we try to try to get the best version of this person's argument if we can and, um, and address that as opposed to maybe our read or whatever, like, like that is. But I think also sometimes that, um, sometimes people get confused between, um, like critiquing rhetoric and critiquing like the, the, the viewpoint itself and that they never distinguish which one they're doing. Like, uh, I think it's possible to, um, I think it's possible to, uh, engage in bad rhetoric while still make ultimately being slightly correct. And somebody could say, Hey, like, I don't really love the way that you're talking about this, but I think you're basically right. And I think that might be a way to start approaching like, um, you know, dealing with some of the times where people come in and they're just like, ah, this is bullshit. When it's like, okay, actually, are you mad at the rhetoric? Or you, do you think the person is actually putting out a bad idea? Making that clear which one you're you're talking about can actually help her make a more useful conversation. Hmm. That's going to be another one now. Just saying. The next drama arc is heating up. Uh, got Riley Grace Roshong talking to uh, Buck Angel and uh, what's his name? Calvin whatever. Gara. Uh, yeah, Calvin Gara. That shit's uh that shit's not going down well with certain sections of the left community. Wait, hang on, wait, Riley speaking to Buck Angel, like I, yeah, is right a now, shit. as we speak. Right now, as we speak, holy fuck. Yeah. Riley's um, talked to a lot of uh, people that are very, you know, divergent, um, you know, from, from you know, from like the quote unquote woke scold um side. I'm using, you know, Xander Hall's words, not my own there. 
Um, <laughs> like, you know, R Riley does talk to a lot of different people, but that one really surprises uh, me. That, 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 you, um, not just a boomer. Yeah, you mean to tell me we're having, we're having a panel about infighting here. And whilst that's going on, there's like a valve with this pressure building up of Basically. infighting, just waiting to explode. Just off waiting. This panel. It's, yeah. it's, it's already, it's already going off on Twitter a little bit. But the thing is, Dark Angel's coming on, I'm fairly certain. It's Riley's the sound of the valve popping. <laughs> well, the <laughs> Some accusations, going on nice. the accusations so far are that uh, Riley's not putting up enough of a fight on certain points that are being made. That oh. she's just sitting there and nodding along to certain... Uh, I think is the stream going on right now? now? I think it starts in an I hour don't, and five I don't minutes. think some people understand what it's like to be in that position where you have someone on who's like... Um, maybe there's some small similarities, but there's a huge, like, kind of elephant in my, the room of contention, my, and you have to just sit there and be, if you want to change their mind, you have to be like... If there yeah, are, I, if, yeah. if there are, like, if if it's only, if it's... Ah, oh, jeez. No, Buck Angel shouldn't be fucking platformed by anybody. He's a hateful fucking transphobe. Fuck off. Like, the idea, this is, this is the, like, gap between, like, me and fucking Rose of Dawn or Blair White and somebody. Yeah, bu right? Buck, Buck out outed somebody, horrendous. yes. It's not that there's, like, they're broadly in agreement and there's just this one thing that they disagree. One of the Wachowskis. No, no. Fuck that shit. This is the lines <laughs> thing we talked about earlier, where, like, people draw personal lines for when they excommunicate people, and perhaps it's interesting to talk about, like, where that differs for different leftist people. Sure. I mean, I mean I'm fine. I don't know how much. That. I don't know how much Nafi knows about, like, Buck Angel, but, like, the Buck Angel apology are on the left. Re contrapoints. Like, well, isn't really that, fucking pisses I mean, me isn't like, that an um, interesting aspect of the problem is people don't know, and then you feel pressure to tell them about why you don't engage, and then that you know goes out through but, the community, yeah. and that's all they know of the person. Well, the problem is people don't. They reveal know that they were trans. They fucking like, that's what I mean by want to stand for them, right? Because of some other connection, i.e., I want to say that Buck Angel's not that bad because of the contrapoints drama. Right, which is a pretty common fucking way that people tend to engage with this, especially, uh, I hate to fucking say it, but like cis dudes, right? Well, well there's more than just that. I mean, th the there's more than just that. There's also the dynamic of a lot of times, like, I mean, like, I got called we can talk about uh, this uh, somebody with fascistic tendencies hey, Connie, by, by Lizzie, somebody on Twitter, you. by a leftist, Welcome to the you know, you know oh, you, a fun. Twitch person, <laughs> right? So, like, there is a phenomenon of people exaggerating what somebody's said or, like, twisting their words or, like, completely calling somebody who's, like, for all practical purposes, a fucking SJW. I mean, I have the blue hair to prove it, right? Um, you know, like, like if that can be, if that, yeah, if that can I happen, I guess that, people are large. used to, like, usually kind of reading some distortion into these accusations, but with Buck Angel, we are talking about somebody who openly identifies as being red pilled. We are talking about somebody who's, you know, uh, trans med. You know, j just like the the list kind of goes on. Like, I you mean, know, just like, Buck Angel outed talking. someone. Buck yeah, Angel outed someone. Uh, well, One yeah, of the Wachowski I mean, sisters. Yeah. yeah but that was. So, uh, I mean, I mean, that was fucking ages ago. The point is that like the behavior has continued and got worse as time has gone on. You know, so well, it's like. This brings up like a cool idea, like perhaps instead of framing those discussions about the people we don't want to talk to as like this person has done X, Y and Z instead talking in the abstract like so personally, I have a rule. Here is my line. When people step over this line, when people behave this way, when they do this, when they do that, that's when they they enter a place where I, I don't feel comfortable communicating or talking about this person and then to say so-and-so person, so-and-so person, so-and-so person have crossed that line. And then it's not drama. Then it's I like the not, whole boy, focal God. point for 80% of the statement was what your rule is. And it's not the person because the whole, the a whole half of this is you don't want to give that person more attention in your statement against them. Like this is something I saw on uh, Ico's panel with frames and stuff where they didn't want to talk about a person, but they spent like 90% of the time talking about the person, what they believe, whatever, they just didn't use a name. And it's like, well, no, it's like attention that you spend on like building out what that person believes in that I think like, you don't want to do that. You just want to say why you don't agree with the, the person in a more broad no, sense, we'll list talk the about person piece, as like a here. list of names and then move on you. past it, I think. Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I just, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think, I don't think the problem will come from like, platforming back angel the problem is going to come from like the rhetoric that's like within the within the debate right like that's the that's where the issue is about to come from 
It's and like, that would be cool to hear at the very beginning. So just like, you know, the rhetoric they use when they say this, when they say that, when they say that, that's there's much more uber yikes, that and it does blah, blah, blah damage more. that I want oh, to no, stop. I mean, it's, yeah, no, it's not necessarily about what Buck Angel says, but it's about, like, uh, Riley's response to that shit. That's the, that's, that's the current, like, Twitter we can talk about it rumblings, point. is that, yeah, Riley hasn't put enough, enough of a fight on things that are incredibly harmful. So, so is that a line for you then if somebody like platforms somebody and they don't do a good enough job of like dismantling those ideas that puts them over the line well i think the worry is that she agrees with some of those things right at least that's the worry other people are expressing currently so it's like um shit it's really it's really awkward to talk about this with with something that's literally just starting up right now right like i i, I don't know i like riley personally and like I'll, I'll go and watch the full thing before i make any like personal judgment and yeah, you know it's... if she has fucked up then like i don't think that that will be a fuck up out of malice or anything or out of her being a, a shit person i think it would just be you know we, we're we're all kind of fumbling through the whole content creation and platforming yeah. and arguing with people thing. There's um, no, there's no use yeah. for people that aren't aware. There's no user guide for any of this. There isn't a booklet that you're given that tells you what you should and shouldn't do and all this shit. You have to That's figure why out why we yourself. need the ethics council. Exactly, and I'm going to be, the, I'm going to be in charge of the ethics council, okay? And I'm going to end up appointing all the people on it, and then it's going to be like a fucking, you know, we're going to get into some Stalinist wait, shit. Wait, wait, would, would, would that make, would that make you the grand inquisitor? Yes, I'll be the Grand Inquis Inquisitor. There we go. There we go. Granddaddy Chuds, Twitch Almanac. And the first person that's, that's got to go, Book Smarts. <laughs> oh! <laughs> out you go! Honesty. Boop! <sighs> no, I'm um, sick of Book Smarts coming in here and telling me where my rhetoric's gone wrong. Yeah, I didn't I didn't like how opposed he was to the Ethics Council. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a, sure sign a, of a dangerous a... one to have around, you know. <laughs> it goes against our interests. We should have a trial of some sorts. We've got to solidify the power of the Ethics Council so we can make it as ethical as possible. Even I if like that means uh, being unethical. Book boy gulag, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, um, yeah, it's all a bit fucked. Like a, like a better panel bureau seems like a cool idea. I like that. Yeah, it's like it, a version of partnership. Like, dude, I want to get the better panel bureau fucking stamp so that I'm in the Twitter thread for him or some shit like that. You know? Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, what what could you what could you offer people that would be good enough that they'd want to adhere to the, you know, the standards? Oh, you could lock down some talent. You could lock down Dario and all the other spicy people, and you can say, <laughs> guys, don't go on a panel that doesn't meet our ethics standards. Otherwise, it's not safe. Oh play. my god! Like you're boxers, dude. Gonna... You gotta put rules on those killers. <laughs> you're never gonna lock down Dario with something like that, though. That's the thing, right? It's just not gonna happen. I know, do, do, do you remember? You you know, you go on a some of some of uh, you know, the, you you, uh, you like going on a panel. Yeah. Would you? Let's I say there was known to show thing. up on a few. Yeah. Would you? <laughs> would you? Would you do that? Would you um, agree to only appear on panels that have got the seal of approval? This is just dumb. I There's no know. way you're gonna do this. No, There's probably no not. Dumb I mean, I don't know. I'd be certainly willing to like talk about stuff with with people, and I have like I'm way more. I'm like, I mean, I don't host panels. It's like not my thing. It's just not my thing. Um, but like, I have a lot of thoughts about panels. So if people ask me my opinion, I'll give them my honest critique of how they run their panel or 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 whatever. I mean, I don't know that like. I don't know that like a like a centralized seal granting like Nintendo seal of approval thing is is necessarily gonna <laughs> gonna do us much good, but I certainly think it's, that like I think, I think it's just gonna create more like divisive. Yeah, I think that. it would divide it further. Yeah. However, I, I do think that there's like I think there's some room for saying like hey like. Um, maybe we should come together and like uh you know you had at one point you were talking about doing a like a uh, a convention of like lefty twitch people and just coming together and say hey let's have like a big uh forum on what we think is good and bad about panels let's try and sort it out and come to what we what we have and then maybe have a document that says hey here's a good guide for people who are looking to run panels we at this yeah, convention we came together and be, talked about it, needs it. To be if you're going to do that sort of thing it needs to be guidelines it can't be like um you know any kind of i don't know because you're just going to create more tension and conflict that way i think um i think it needs to be like a cooperative endeavor in which people kind of generally um agree to what they think are like probably 
good pieces of advice for creating like a better better space you know i don't i yeah anything that's sort of like set in stone or whatever is just gonna create conflict again i do think like a handbook of some sort that that we could come together and work on would be great like stuff like yeah. hey here's a whole bunch of rules that are really that actually have worked really well in our experience for like your your discord you're, you're gonna build a community discord here's some basic rules that you can set up that will prevent like 90 percent of the problems that you might run God, into my discord sucks i fucking abandoned like basically everybody in there I, I'm, no I'm gonna reboot it at some point though. rule number one no one uh is allowed to be edgier than me yeah <laughs> i mean i mean i think that's a great rule that's a rule that i literally like i asked if i could borrow that rule from uh from another community that's oh, I borrow, yeah it's in my rules too yeah yeah that's like one that's like great because it it lets you it lets like the it, that means that the, the community like sort of whether it's fully enforced perfectly or not but it means that the top rule is is gonna fall at the at the streamer you know what i mean the most toxic person in the community who's allowed to be in provided you actually enforce the rules is gonna be the streamer themselves and if that's the problem then they could you can kind of go from there it allows people to have a, a standard for what they're coming coming into and can expect from the community but yeah i mean i think stuff like that would be good um I mean, I don't know. The the, the 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 trouble is, is like it comes down to time and money, right? Like, you know, I've got a lot of shit that I'm doing. Like the idea of, of setting something like that up, like we talked about it. And it's like, yeah, we should do that. And it's like, yeah, we should really do that. Yeah, we should really do that, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should really do that. But someone needs to take the leap and, and actually, you know, engage in, in setting it up and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But I, I think it's one of those things where it's like, you know. Ethics is hard. Yeah, yeah. Sure. It is. If you haven't read every book about ethics by Kant and Aristotle, you cannot have an opinion on this stuff. Totally true. Please exit the Discord. Yeah, just don't tell Rem about the Ethics Council, okay? Yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. yeah Rem is not invited to the Ethics Council, okay? I would. Die. Nobody tell Rem. But how can we do without our philosopher king? <laughs> I think if you if you got people together, like to kind of collectively try to put this project together. And, and yeah. maybe once you have a small group of people and you kind of say publicly like, hey, this is something we want to do, like, um, and maybe try to garner support or even fundraise or something like that, like that may make it more uh, uh, substantial or m more practical to really accomplish. I, I don't know how that would look, but it's something to- Yeah, I think also too, like, um popularizing and encouraging like certain like community documents can be pretty cool like i mean um like the whole like sort of following open source like how the, the open source community around around software and stuff works like there are a lot of like sort of autonomous or relatively autonomous projects that become spread around because like hey this is really cool we make it free for everyone somebody who by whatever chance of fate had the ability to make this document or put down these things and a lot of people have looked at it or there's been a whole bunch of people who've worked on it um then you can distribute that and it can become um easy to um to you know sort of find and access that for new people coming to the community um i mean for one example there's a you know like the, the vosh's research document has been really helpful to me on various cases and i'm really glad that that's open um, to like anybody to view and, and look at and that it's maintained and people, you know, say, Hey, this, this one needs to be updated or whatever. That's like really cool. And it's a resource that anybody on this space can go and look at. And that's amazing because it gives you a starting ground for like, Hey, I'm going to do some research for this, uh, particular argument. Where should I start? Well, I could check the research document to see if somebody's done it already. It's kind of like having a Wikipedia on hand, but a little bit more specialized. Okay, well, look, I mean, is there anything else we need to talk about? I was going to end the stream a bit early anyway for the debate. Um, yeah. is, there, is there any other matters we need to discuss? Well, Booksmarts wanted us to all put draw our lines out in public here. I, I'm okay with uh, with saying some of the lines that I, like, if we want to talk about that a little bit, like some of the lines that I personally think are, like, too far for me, I'm fine with that. Is anybody else okay with that, or...? Uh, I think I'm going to take off. I need to do a shit. Um, but I, I, I love you all. And uh, it's been very uh, it's been very interesting. Uh, I think I know everybody here apart from Snowdrift and Snowflake. The two snows. Uh, it was nice meeting you anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, you as well. Take care. Yeah, have a good one. Um, yeah, thanks, Chad. Much love. Mix, Vivian Wolf, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube. You know the drill. Um, 
Follow me on the Twitter. All right. Peace. Bye, Viv. Bye. What are we doing, Wait. Chad? We uh, we we closing or we? Wait, uh... hang on. In front of all they're literally building a council, a council to council people. Who who is building a council? Like that was a joke. Do people understand when we were talking about the fucking council of ethics? That was a joke. We weren't actually seriously advocating for a council of people to cancel people. What what the fuck are you talking chat, about? Chat, chat. That, that council already exists on uh, left Twitch, unfortunately. They, like that that um that that position is already occupied by uh, other Nobody streamers. Nobody knows who they are, though. They lurk. <laughs> some of us some of us know all too well. Let's uh, okay. Let's wrap things up. Oh boy! I know. I know. Everyone, listen. I know everyone wants to fucking go across and like you know, do the fucking debate and stuff. I'm gonna go to bed probably because I'm tired. So let me just go around the room one more time. I want to hear like any final thoughts you got about this topic, uh, and then just give yourself like a, a little final shill. Um. So yeah, ordinary snowflake. Yeah, uh, final thoughts. Uh, I like this. This conversation was very focused on on Twitch and Twitch communities, but I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back to the the other place that this kind of infighting happens, which which is of course the Twitter, the Reddit, the the you know once upon a time Tumblr, but you know Rip. Top secret um, council. And I, I I think that ultimately what we need are long term new platforms, like new platforms that incentivize different kinds of behavior. Uh, you know, maybe someone step right smarter back. than me can can figure out what that would look like, but. Uh, Ultimately, like the the platforms that we are using are platforms that are built to serve capitalism. They are built to fuel drama. They are built to fuel a certain kind of celebrity that uh, is not conducive to what the left is trying to do. I don't think so. Uh, let's let's move let's move past this. Let's evolve. Um, last uh, last little shill. Uh, the Hamilton video. I you know. If you if you hate Hamilton, you don't quite know why, and you want to you know feel morally righteous about that, like it's right there. Uh, Ordinary Snowflake uh, on YouTube and at or O R D underscore Snowflake on Twitter. That's it for me. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, no comment, chick. Hi, I'm a uh, no comment chick. Um, Irene, I'm on uh, Twitch. I stream um, debates debate analysis. I do a panel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a discussion, sometimes it's a debate, sometimes it produces like a spicy take that has us talking all week. Sometimes it's more like uwu. And, uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get. So yeah, um, check me out. But other than that, I'm usually on really late night because I'm a student. So that's the only time I have is to like stay up way too late and uh, play video games uh, and uh, do React content. So. Um, but yeah, as far as like um, infighting, um, you know, um, it's uh, I haven't found a cure for it, and I, I know that's not what we're like kind of here, you know, to do. It, maybe it's just to like think out loud and um, maybe pick each other's brains as, as far as how to manage you know the the drama that we are forced to um deal with and uh you know maybe attract less in the future but um yeah no it's really good uh to talk to all of you and uh just like vivian i know everyone but the two snows but it's good to meet you too and nice to get a youtuber's uh perspective on this stuff just because we are in a, our own little insular uh twitch bubble here so it's nice to i know things always work a little bit different over there so I'll have to check out that content. You said the Hamilton video? Yeah, it's called uh, Hamilton, Liberalism and American Mythos. Might have to watch that on stream. Okay, no, that sounds an Akanisha's video. Um, right, Snow Oh, have mean. a good night, Potato Go Butt Plug. Yeah, um, thanks for having me, Chad. Uh, it was nice and chill, had a good time. Um, of yeah, course I, guess I did, just, I always like, wash my basic hands. pieces of advice of <clears throat> is like, you know, it's just really important to to be Very cognizant clean. of how you operate or try to be and maneuver on social media and to try to hold yourself to a higher standard than you may do to others. Um, and take take fucking breaks. Like I I um, deactivated for several days and like before. genuinely, I mean, I think it was somewhat coincidental, but That's the day point. after was like 
one of the best days I've had mentally in quite a long time. Um, it's, it's really vital that you just like be cognizant of how you function in person as well as online. And if these spaces are really being toxic, like you can, you can be used to it and familiar with it, like the frog in the boiling water. So it's just important to, to, to measure that for yourself and try to be aware of it and take breaks. Um, uh, yeah, so I make music. It's like dream pop, bedroom pop, whatever stuff. It's on YouTube. I'm on Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, Snow.drift is what I'm on Spotify and all that. Uh, Snowdrift Moon, all one word, is on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, yeah, give that a listen if you can. Um, yeah, kind of. Listen to the new Joji album. That shit's really dope. Um, and that's it. Okay, cool. Uh, Nupi? Hey, I'm Nupi. Thanks for watching. Um, Infying is great. It's good content. We'll talk about it more. Uh, can't wait until it gets elevated even further into uh, Colosseum fights and yeah okay cool uh you can you can cancel me at uh noopy tunes at noopy tunes on uh twitter okay Dimawala. yeah thanks for having me today chud um i mean in in closing i guess uh my thing would be hey like there's gonna be drama drama's a little bit of drama's okay just don't get lost in the sauce you know don't don't lean into it too hard and recognize the limitations and the potential damage that can that can come from this sort of thing while recognizing that hey people like a good show that's that's a reality of entertainment that's my main take um, and you know we should be careful not to confuse our personal disagreements with like some sort of political crusade I think that is a big problem that we need to keep an eye out for in our communities. Um, and yeah, um, my name is uh, is Demon Mama. You can find me at Demon Mama Live on Twitch, um, or your Demon Mama on Twitter. So give me a follow and uh, come hang out. We're going to be co covering the debate after this. So yeah, if you want to come hang out and hear my thoughts on the panel and the debate, it's a show for you. Okay, finally, Book Smarts. Hi, uh, I'm Book Smarts. Normally, I talk at like a more serious level about communication stuff like this and. We actually go into the weeds of discerning logic and rhetoric and talking about how like word choice influences things and tone and all of that. Um, and so if you're interested to like learn more about the particulars of this, you might like my channel. Otherwise, I post memes on YouTube. So book smarts on either platform, you'll find some fun stuff. OK, great. Listen, thanks for joining me, everyone. OK, good luck. I hope you have fun watching the debate. I'm going to get to bed shortly after I've chatted to my chat for a bit. I'll catch you later. Godspeed. Get some Bye. rest, Chad. Bye. Bye. Right, thanks for hosting this. Bye. No worries. Bye. Hey, that was interesting. That was a very interesting one. That was an interesting conversation. All right, so we have a couple things to talk about before the debate begins. I need to get a little, like, uh, thing that lets me watch when the debate's going to start. That was an interesting ride. I don't know what was going on for some of that. I feel like um, Booksmarts was a little bit mad. Maybe he was memeing a little bit. Not sure exactly. Um, not sure. But it was interesting nonetheless. Yeah, no, don't worry. I've been hydrating. I got my, I got a little bit of sodi here for some light caffeine, and I got a whole thing of water. I've been, I've been drinking. Thank you for reminding me. I also grabbed a um, handful of some very fortifying peanuts when I was out in the uh, out out there after I went to the bathroom. So I have some protein. I think the discussion was a bit more necessary than I initial initially, uh, sorry, initially thought it would be. It, it, like it kind of addressed the elephant in the room. Yeah, it did. I think this is a good conversation to have periodically. I actually think it's very valuable. I mean, of course it applies to a more niche audience, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, we're all streamers on Twitch. All of us um, participate in panels, so it's important for us to talk about some of the problems in our space. Even if that only appeals to, if that doesn't appeal to as many people as, say, the debate. You know what I mean? Um, or, or when I'm doing coverage on a specific news story, I think this is an important conversation to have. And I think it's an important conversation for people who love this space, for the fans of this space to be able to enjoy. So I'm perfectly fine with doing it. Yeah. Um, there were a couple of questions throughout. Most of them had nothing to do with, um, what we were talking about at the moment. 
I don't know if um, 80s mullet is still here. 80s mullet, I don't know if you're still here. If you're still here, um, I said I would address what you were bringing up, which is, let's see, um, while good people are arguing about this nonsense, terrible people are choosing judges. That's true, um, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that per particular thing. I can't do that. It is within my ability. I am, what I have is I have a camera and, and a computer and, um, and I have some skill for presentation. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously, Peacecraft. But, um, but yeah, um, yeah, uh, I have a skill for presentation a little bit and some knowledge about streaming. So I'm doing what I can do right now. And sometimes that means having a conversation with some of my fellow workers about how we make this space better and how we do better for both ourselves and for the community, how we are more efficacious in our political messaging, um, you know, how we do better. I think that's really important conversation to have. Um, I am not in a position of power where I can select judges. Um, I don't, um, I just don't. I'm not in that position, so that's not something I can have a say over. Um, I can influence it a little bit. I can cover it and have quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Do you want to hop on chat, um, Revan? Like, what do you want to do? Are you wanting to chat with me, or, or what is it? You, you can just drop in the chat if you want to, or, I mean, I guess we can start on the Discord. I only have so much time before the debate begins, but, um... Yeah, so 80s mullet, I'm sorry if you didn't like that panel, but um, the reality is I think that sometimes it's a good thing to do. Um, and not every single segment is going to be of um, earth-shattering importance. Unfortunately, it's just not sustainable to do that all the time. If I did every single stream about um, judge picks... Um... <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. 